I have some new tour dates to announce. I will be in Grantville, PA, on July 19th. That's Pennsylvania at Penn Heroes Stage at Hollywood Casino. Presale starts this Wednesday, June 7th at 10 a.m. Eastern with code RATKING. General on sale begins Friday, June 9th at 10 a.m. Eastern. We're also announcing a sixth Toronto show on August 19th at the Elgin Theater. Tickets for that show are on sale now. We also have tickets remaining for Austin, Texas, June 11th, Edmonton, Alberta, July 14th, Guilford, New Hampshire, July 20th, Windsor, Ontario, August 18th, and Niagara Falls, Ontario, August 20th. Get all your tickets through theovon.com slash T-O-U-R. Uh, I'm so thankful to you guys for coming out and spending time. Check out our classic merch with the racing, hunting, and fishing collections. We also have the classic rat tee, the I'm upstairs gear, and more. Head over to theovonstore.com today to take a look. Today's guest is, uh, is one of the most entertaining men on social media. Um, he's been here before. Uh, I love getting to spend time with him. He has his studio right upstairs from ours. And... Um, and it's just great to know that there's such good creative energy in the building. He has his Stiff Socks podcast. Uh, he tours. Um, and he's one of the most creative young men in the game. Uh, today's guest is Mr. Trevor Wallace. Shine that light on me. I'll sit and tell you. Kelly Rowland, baby. Kelly Rowland. We rolling. You see me, Kelly Rowland. They hate Chamillionaire? They hate He's like an investor now. Dude, Chamillionaire, um, Chamillionaire was, uh, he had a studio by our first studio. He had a uh, office in our first studio. What was he doing in there? In the same building. He was just Chamillion, I guess, or whatever. <laughs> I don't know what they do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's last I saw, he's just a big investor in a bunch of like business shit. Yeah. He wasn't in the trenches anymore. You know, he no, wasn't. No, 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 no. You know what the trenches are? I've heard of them. Yeah. Now I grew up in a suburb. We never, like, we, we wish we were in trenches. Really? We, th we always thought we were in a gang, but like nobody like would check us. Like that's how you know in your suburban, like you could just say you're in a gang and everybody, all right. Like nobody was like, which one? People yeah. would just be like, oh, me too, man. Uh, what time you guys meet? We had a meeting time for our gangs <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. after math on Tuesdays. Yeah. yeah, like if your mom picks you up from the gang, it's not really. Exactly, right? Right, and then she offers a ride to everybody else. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you need a ride home, Riley? <laughs> oh, your mother's coming? She's a sweetheart. But fucking mom, stop, dude. Mom, stop. Mom, we call him fucking Gunner. <laughs> you know, she's not even using people's code names. Right, right, right. Yeah, and then when your mom walks away, you look back, you're like, fucking bitch. Yeah, dog. I used to cuss I'll my mom all the time. fucking tell dad. Did, did you ever cuss at parents? I used to cuss them all the time. No, I think um, we would sometimes spray paint obscenities and stuff on my mom's car, I remember. <laughs> and tell her How, other with people. big words? Huh? Like big words or just like kind of small? No, just things like queer or whatever. Like things <laughs> that didn't even really relate to her. It was just. Would people honk? Be like. I will, I'm with you. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what people, people like. Some people, I think, showed up there at night, like thinking it was like a club or whatever. Like you, sometimes you go out there in the middle of the night, there'd be a couple of gay dudes yeah, out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, People you know, are knocking on the windows, be like, where <laughs> yeah. do I Venmo? Where do yeah, I Venmo? Yeah. yeah, we had a spray paint that was like meant for just like like art, but it washed off. So you could spray paint somebody's car and then they'd lose their mind, but then it'd rub right off. Oh, that's sick. It was man. fun, yeah. Yeah, they had this thing bus. People would put a, uh, they put like a slice meat or something on somebody's car at night. Oh, a shark. Oh, baloney. Baloney, yeah, baloney. would take paint off a car. Yes. They'd be like a it. Honda Civic rolling around with just smallpox oh, yeah. on it. It looked like somebody had done cupping on the back of yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or on yeah. the hood. Like, damn, that Civic's really working on itself. It's <laughs> yeah, trying yeah. to find its inner core, you know? Yeah, dude, definitely. It's got its chakras right. Yeah, it seemed like, yeah, it's I like. I forgot about that. Oh, yeah. And you, somebody, if you really hated somebody, you put three or four slices on them. I mean, you would charcuterie up a damn, uh, the front of a Ford Escort. Oh, yeah. If you exactly. hated somebody in the area. Right. You know, they'd fucking, you'd just But then have the them. birds would pull up and be like, oh, shit, we got a charcuterie board right here. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, there was one. There was one that would like turn somebody's grass a different color. You throw like Cheerios in it, or do you ever do forking where you put a plastic forks in somebody's lawn and then you snap the handle? That was most fucked up because it just break a lawnmower. Oh really? Yeah, you break it, and then at the top you break the handle, so you can't really get them out. We were just bored and didn't have drugs. Yeah, it sounds like a very low risk gang. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did y'all have a name or anything for the gang or not? I don't remember. It, I just remember the initials were TFE. I don't remember what it stands for. The fucking English or something. I don't really know what it was. There's definitely a fucking in there. You like? Yeah. When I found out the the f word, the first time I said it to my dad, I called him a fuckhead. I didn't know. I knew the power of fuck, but I didn't know how to use it. Oh yeah. So my dad said something, and I was walking away from the table on my way out. I was like, "Whatever, you fuckhead." And then I just heard the belt coming off. <laughs> oh yeah, you just hear the, the the fondling with it. Yeah, and I was like, oh boy. Then you run to your room. It's like he knows where you're at. Like, that's a yeah, that's the worst thing. Like you only had one place to go, and you're cornered. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you get your ass beat. Papa, no. Yeah. But it, Papa, yeah. no, dude. Yeah, it, was, it sounded like it. Uh, <laughs> sounded like a very. We got Amish What real century quick. was it? Uh, <laughs> the early nineties. Okay, I was gonna say early nineties. Papa, no, sound kind of. But I just try to make a connection so he wouldn't hurt yeah. me. Oh yeah, you know? father. Like, yeah, father. Yeah. Tis I. Yeah, your loving son. If I made a connection, maybe it wouldn't hit me as hard. Yeah, father. It's. Not meant to be, Father. It's me. Your dementia's kicking in. Yeah. <laughs> it's your good old pal, Trev. <laughs> Do you want to be in the gang? <laughs> yeah, I remember one time my mom uh, broke a paddle over my ass, and I started laughing. She really? She, yeah. Your parents really abused you. They would uh, spank you. Yeah. Yeah, my oh, mom yeah. spanked you. Yeah. It was a classic white family. But yeah. like they would do that, and then they would be like, "I'm only doing this because I love you." And they like hit me, like, yeah. fucking hit me, talk some shit, you know? Yeah. Don't don't throw some soliloquies as a haiku poem. Yeah, it is. I guess I think the thing about running to the room that is such the because as a parent you have to be like, how dumb is this kid? <laughs> they ran to the only place. And it's the same thing you did as a kid. You're like, right. how have we not learned? We as just a think that that was like our safety. It's like I'm in my room. You can't. You can't get in here. Yeah. And they're like, watch me. <laughs> we didn't have any locks on the doors. You didn't. Mm -mm. I had to jerk off just with a uh, with a safety off every night. Just with God was your lock. Yeah. Just hope. Oh. And what I and the light used to crack through the door. So I'd be like, oh, I'm going to bed. I'm gonna touch myself. So I'd go to bed and then I put a towel. Most people do this to hide like smoke from weed, but I wasn't cool. So I put the towel under the door crack so the light wouldn't shine through because I was touching Smoke myself. from that freaking rub, baby. <laughs> Smoking that cock. You just know in saying? case you were freaking, yeah. In case you just did it so well, you just started nativing out. And yeah, exactly. Real smoke they they knew what was going on. Oh, they knew God. what was going on. Did Dude, you know, I remember when a... F have you ever laid on your back and put your legs in the air while you jerked off? That's like the, <laughs> the fuck is thing you could do. I'm never, I would never do that. It sounds like you might have done that. I haven't done that. You want to? No, I don't want to do that, <laughs> dude. That's crazy, dude. Wait, so you're saying... This guy seems... Like, uh, like, wait, what, not, what, when would you ever need to be in that position? You're laying on your back and your feet are in the air? I don't know. That's I a just reverse remember, colonoscopy right there. Yeah, it, I just remember seeing this very alarming like drawing or something on a... I don't website. Know. Uh, it could have been on a website or even like the side of like a dumpster, which was like an early website. Oh yeah, like before they had websites, people would like write message for help on a dumpster. You know, oh, of course, that is true. You know, like my son's gay or something. <laughs> yeah, like, on a dumpster, you're like, yeah, it's recycling like, well, or yard waste. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Neither. It's for my son. Yeah, yeah, Can you yeah. pick what position you get a colonoscopy in? Oh well, I've wondered a little bit. I mean, you know, and. I've long thought that a lot of misbehaving children or kids that are really bad were born doggy style. I've heard that. I feel like that was the most like wholesome missionary. Probably just jerk off into your hand and give it to her. Like however you want to insert this into you. Oh, that's very, that's like a Valentine's. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's like an old it. school Valentine's like where people would walk right thousands there. of miles to get it there. The seed, right? Yeah. Here you go. Postmates. Postmates for Cheryl. <laughs> just <laughs> nut in the hand. <laughs> If you were to have a kid, what position would you want it to be? Um, what's it called when you uh, um, conceived? Yes. Well, that oh, that was that was what I thought. I thought years ago, and I've long thought that children conceived in doggy style yeah. positions are more likely for it makes sense. Things like crime, got that dog in them. Um, yeah, they got yeah, they got just that yeah, dog. little they, labradoodle. <laughs> Something about it. Yeah, I think if you throw yeah, I mean the kind of kid where why their parents are making love, you fucking. If a frisbee goes past and the semen in there just kind of runs to one side of her body, 
That's that dog, baby. That's, that's the that dog, dog right there. Yeah. You think? What do you think it would, the the type of kid would be if the girl's on top, and then that's how it's conceived? You think the kid? Maybe it's like know. tall, maybe a little like good class posture. Clown. Good posture. I definitely think good posture. Straight. I don't like people with good posture. It feels like they know something that we don't. Well, it feels like they're working for somebody. Yeah. It feels like somebody who's trying really hard to blend in to be a human. He's, yes. And like, if you asked him what his name was, he would know it. He would say it like too quick. Yeah. Rick. Like uh, Rick. Uh, yeah. yeah. I'm Rick. Uh, it'd have a question mark. Yeah. I'm Robert. Rick. Robert. Yeah. When it's just like this. I don't know. It just feels weird. I'm Rick. <laughs> Like they start, fu- like the like it starts glitching after or it's like you didn't get the update or whatever. Yeah, like he's, he's probably like trying to read a bowl of alphabet soup. Like he could really quickly if yeah. he wanted to. Yeah, yeah. Just start yelling all the letters. I'm Rick. Uh, I'm Rick. I'm Rick. And then he's like starts like if you don't get the update, the guy gets gay or something. He's like, <laughs> I'm Rick. <laughs> you're like what how much does the update cost could and you, the update costs like 59.99 yeah. you're like well you can also like hack updates but then if your son like your good postured son is now a gay son everybody's like oh you can't afford to make your son straight you won't get the update i think it'd be more him. expensive to make your son gay oh that's i think true. it's an upgrade to be gay yeah that's true you get better style you always have energy you ever seen a gay dude yawn yeah uh-uh just always on dude i've never seen a gay dude yawn they're just too pumped. They just got life. They all, also, I just, I think you need a couple of gay dudes in your corner because they're just opinionated. They will give it to you straight. Like, 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 bro, like just a, like every dude at Barstool, like you could ask them a question. They'll be like, yeah, bet for sure. Aha. Uh-huh. But you can be like, oh, is this a good outfit? But yeah, for sure. But like a gay dude will be like, good outfit for what? Dumpster diving? And you're right. like, right, that right there, I need that in my life. Right. They'll, they'll put you in check. Right. Yeah. Like fighting your stepdad. Yeah. Yeah. Did you ever run away from your parents when you were a kid? Oh, dude, I remember I ran away. Yeah, I ran and away. And what would you pack? Would you pack anything or would you just raw dog life? I remember the second I was born, I remember being across the room. <laughs> like I, <laughs> You got shot put it out? <laughs> I mean, I ran away. <laughs> They're going to steal! <laughs> but you, the cord is still on? Oh, dude, I think I remember tying the cord like the nurse's foot just to like keep people occupied. Oh, like you're like surfing? A, like, a, no, just can, to confuse them, you know? Oh, really? Because that thing's a fucking house arrest. I wonder bracelet. how many babies think that's their dong. Or they're like, damn, I'm packing. And Out of the, the gate? Doc- yeah. And the doctor's like, oh, no, we got to cut that one. And then we got to cut the other one. Yeah, I don't know. I do remember, I remember trying to run away, man. I remember going to the post office because I thought somebody could mail me somewhere. <laughs> you were a light baby? In our town. No, I think when I was like probably 10 or something like that, <laughs> or 11. Okay. Just rode my bike over there. And I remember thinking that somebody could mail me somewhere. Maybe with, not 10, maybe 11. With the bike or no? I don't know. I just remember finally getting to the post office. It wasn't that far, but it was like maybe about five miles. And I got there and I was like, the first person that I saw that looked nice or like concerned yeah. or whatever. Somebody combed their hair. I was like, I got to get out of town. Where, where did you want to go? Anywhere. Yeah. That's funny. Just go to the post office. Send me anywhere. Yeah. My dad had a friend who robbed a uh, a bank on a bike when he was 14. Oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> Which is hilarious. That's the same mentality of running to your room when your parents are about to hit you. You're like, where are you running to on a bike? Like, Skate park? I don't like Kmart? You're really anywhere. Yeah. But he got caught. He did? Like, yeah, they just put a stick in his spokes. And oh. I don't know how they caught him, but yeah, dude, as a 14-year-old on a bike... Like you're gonna get caught. Oh yeah, they had two. They had two brothers in our town. They mm-hmm. were, they were twins, or if they were, uh, they weren't twins. They, they were brothers, and uh, they did a drive-by shooting on a bike in our town. <laughs> bear, bear. One of them named Bear, bear, and I don't bear. know what the other one name was. It was it a tandem bicycle, or they were just riding next to each other? Mm-hmm. A tandem drive-by would be hilarious. Moody or something, maybe Bear, bear, and Moody. But they were brothers, and one of them was on the handlebars. Yeah, and he he did the shooting. And oh, they, on the handlebars. Yeah, he that's shot honestly kind of cute. I think it would be so hard because, like, yeah, the blowback. Yeah, and you're kind of already balancing yourself they up hit a there. Wheelie? That'd be kind of tight. Oh, that'd be sick. I always see that in the South where dudes will just on a dirt bike or like Atlanta type shit. They just do wheelies on just like on a dirt bike through town. Yeah. That makes me feel, uh, you know, good. I like seeing that. Well, that's the new, like, the cavalry's coming when you see a batch of, like... Yeah. Because you'll see some of that. And that is one of the most... There must be something about those those bike riding because that is the most diversifying thing. People, all ethnicities come together to do those things. The wheelies? Yeah. That is true. I was just in Indianapolis over the weekend. There was a whole bunch of that. 
It's just a just a red light, and somebody pulls up, and then just yeah, sound as loud as hell for no reason. Oh, it's the worst, dude. Yeah, I was out there at a Gary V Con. Have you ever met Gary? You went to V Con? Yeah, I went there to go uh, film a video. No, it's bizarre. How was? Yeah, I talked to oh, Gary. Schultz was there. I was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I talked with a- Gary about it online, but it started once he, it was named V Con. To yeah, me, yeah. that was a. It seemed a little. It made me kind of wonder what's going on. What am I getting involved? It in? was. It's exact picture of V Con right now. That's mm-hmm. it. Whatever you're thinking about, what are you thinking about? Uh, yeah, like people bothering people about money. Yeah, it was a lot of like bright colors and people who may have not seen a tit in a while. Oh yeah, I tell you, I know you're talking it, about. It, I mean, look, Gary's a very nice guy, and he like fires these people to fuck up. I, the funniest thing he said, we watched his speech on the last night, and we walked in at a random part, and I walked in on him going, "Fuck your grandparents." Yeah, and I'm like, that's the energy I need in life. <laughs> I'm like, they are past RIP. Love you both, but like, fuck them, you know. That's just where he's at in life. Yeah, he and I are like, uh, oh, I mean, I totally respect kind of like. I respect like, him too. He's, I respect his acumen, you know? Yeah. I think, but he also like, but he tells people crazy shit. He'll be like, you know, oh, you got to, uh, like there's videos of him like meeting a guy in a park. And the guy's like, I sold all of our silverware. I sold yeah. uh, my baby high chairs. I sold everything. I yeah. made I made seven hundred and twenty dollars. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. it carries yeah. like he like hugs him. He's like, that's great. The guy's like, yeah, I, we're not staying. We're living in this park. We're cutting down all costs. And then it pans out, and him and his family are living in a fucking park, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then Gary's like, you're doing and Gary wonderful. Kicks it over, and he goes, <laughs> that's from me to you. You got to start from the bottom to be at the top. And you were ho- too humble. He talks like uh, just like a, like a crazy person in front of a Seven Eleven, but he's so convincing at it. Right. Like if you walk past a guy at Seven Eleven, be like, "Fuck your grandparents!" You'd be like, "Sure." Right. I get that. Or but forgot. Then, yeah. But then you get one of those tiny headsets, like the little like TED Talk ones, and I'm like, "Yeah, you know what? Fuck them." Yeah, I agree. He he makes a lot of good points, but yeah, it, it, it's just good stuff. Well, I think it's you all. There's always people that are giving like guidance and inspiring people. Inspiring is nice because I think it's hard to get inspired. And so yeah. if Gary V inspires you or whoever you find that inspires you, you know, yeah. um, that's great. No, and he, he was very good at it. He could say anything and you put like enough of yeah. an emphasis or like an exclamation point every up a couple words yeah. and you're in. Yeah, the guy's like, are you, are you are you still using silverware? He'll ask yeah. him, are you still using silverware? And the guy's like, yeah, I am. He's like, you can sell, you can sell those. You could easily yeah, sell yeah. those silverware. Yeah. And be up twenty five, twenty eight dollars. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. You have to put food in your mouth with your hand. Yeah. You ever see the videos of him going to garage sales? Mm-mm. They're the funniest God, things ever. That's insane, dude. He's. I mean, he's almost. He has like a hundred fficus million to his name, but he'll go to a garage sale and be like, "How much for this ficus tree?" And they're like, "Oh, seven dollars." And he goes, "I'll give you four. And they're like, "Oh, well, I mean." Okay, we really need it. We just need a liver transplant by Tuesday, right? He'll do that, and then he'll walk away, and I'm like, "Fucking got him! That was a steal." It, it's it's hilarious. That was I made a video about this because it was, that's why we got connected. Really? Um, yeah, I made a video kind of just talking shit how he like literally just lowballs poor families in like Des Moines. Yeah. But, like he like hardballs them. Like he'll walk up and be like hundred bucks for this, and then I'll be like, let me play hard to get. Goes to his car, rips some K, walks back, <laughs> and he's like, we'll do sixty eight. <laughs> Carrie, please, our son is. Our son has one tooth. He's been eating applesauce out of a tube for eight years. And he's like, I'll give you three. It's 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 electric. Fuck I love your it. son. Yeah, I love that type of energy though. Good. But he also he was born like with wine. He was like from a wine fortune. Yeah. I don't, so that's the only thing that, like I'm not knocking it, but it's like is it always just been easy? Has he always had money? Like, is it really I don't know. Uh, is it really if you don't have any money? I forget the backstory, but I think it was, there was something where like he like started the family business something with the winery. I, I don't really know what happened, but um, yeah, I don't know, dude. He was convincing as fuck, and it's like you want to laugh, but then you leave there a little fired up. You ever been to a black church? Oh yeah, dude, those get you fired up. They're so much better than regular church. They got a drum set. Yeah, I've been to regular. I'm Jewish, um, but I went to like regular church a, a few times, and I was like, but after going to a black church and then going to that, I was like, this shit is boring. Oh, dude, black church is definitely, yeah, you, you like. feel the Lord. Oh, you feel the Lord. And somebody will splash fucking hot grease on your back <laughs> during the middle of it. Like, you don't even know what's going on. Like, you don't know if somebody just, like, ripped open, like, a lunch plate real fast. Yeah, yeah, or if yeah, some yeah. lady just, like, whipped her hair. Yeah, yeah, like, you'll yeah. see a black lady. She'll have a fucking plant. She'll be watering a plant yeah. in her hair during right. the fucking sermon, dude. People are dressed Talking up. you a grape or something. Oh, everybody smells good, dude. Yeah. You, the Lord will pass through the room. 
through that one point, like I wanted to give more. I already donated, but I was yeah. like, send that bitch back. I want to donate more. Oh yeah. Send, what, what's the bowl? Co- the whatever. I don't know. But that shit. It, it was like three hours, and I mean, man, it it had an arc. Start out slow. You feel the closing bit. Then it's the grand finale. And I just want to throw my wall in the damn air and be like, I'm converted. And then oh, just yeah. throw it up there. Oh, I'll throw Fuck my, my fucking, bar mitzvah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll throw my fucking dick in the air and catch it in my mouth, dude. You know what I'm saying? If it, if it, if the, if it, if it calls for it. But I'm like, if God calls for it. If God calls for that. If that's but what yeah, I've been in them. Well, the first funeral I ever went to, man, was a oh. black guy. And what, it was. How, how did he die? He, um, Died. He was the biggest guy in our town. His name was Ricardo. Buff or just kind of large? He was buff. He was like a, a man child. It was like as if you saw like a nine year old child, but he was like, I mean, he's probably six, four. Damn. And I bet he, he weighed was nine. He weighed two. No, he looked like a nine year old, okay. but he was probably, I guess we were in 11 or 12. Yeah. Maybe he was six two, six four. I don't, he God, might have been six damn. four. He was the biggest. He was the biggest kid in our town. He was, uh, uh you never seen nothing like it. They didn't yeah. have it. You know when you saw. He should have just been the mayor. Oh, he was. I mean, he definitely. He could fucking keep the sun off of you. <laughs> he was fucking big. I bet you know? he fucked shit up in dodgeball. Oh, dude, he was just. He could do whatever he want. The birds knew him. The birds knew. Him. I mean, you see a bird come fucking. He knew <laughs> it. He was fucking big, dude. He was big, so and so how, how'd he pass? He was playing basketball. It was like a little league basketball game, and I think big it was boy a, little league, eleven and twelve year olds, and yeah. uh, he had a heart attack and died. Really? Was he was he all natty or was he on the roids? He wasn't on anything. He was just on just too much. I think he had did his heart. They said he had an enlarged heart. I don't know what that means. What does that mean? Zach? Yeah, the, Can we look that up? Just the heart of a grown man in a young boy's body. It could have been it. I wish I had a grown man's penis when I was twelve. Do you? Kinda. Oh, you don't want Just that, man. I, I had that. You had that or you have it? I had it as a child. And you were packing large... as a child? Yeah, did you know that? <laughs> How the fuck would I know that? I was born with an adult's... Uh... Adult dong? Genital, yeah. Just, damn, ball and penis or just ball or just mm, penis? I think it's the whole thing. Wow. So when did you know that? Like when, like when did you look down one day and you're like, oh, I'm packing more than the average? Oh, I remember seeing other, I remember seeing some other kids like wieners and not even noticing. And then my wiener, I felt like looked like Florida. <laughs> And I was like, oh, damn, dude, my wiener, like, people are going to show up on my wiener, like, in the summer, you know? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You're like, is that Alabama in there, too, dog? We're packing. And I just remember, like, just being so uncomfortable, yeah, because, um, and I remember sleeping at night and feeling it under my body. Really? And it was just a nightmare. Do so you have to, like, tuck it in and shit, too? Yeah, it was embarrassing. Embarrassing? Yeah, because you weren't the same. You were just abnormal. No kid, no five-year-old's like, yeah, who's got a big dick, you know? <laughs> And if they ask that, they're definitely not five. It's a 48 year old man <laughs> on the internet. <laughs> Who was big dick? Also, other five year olds enter. So, did you grow um, into it or are you just steady packing? No, I just grew into it. Oh, wow. But yeah, I have some more abnormality. But yeah. let's look at that enlarged heart. I just want to know what it's called. An enlarged heart in a child? I've lost two friends actually to basketball playing hard with an really? enlarged heart. An enlarged heart, cardiomegaly. What is it, Zach? Well, it says it's usually caused by another condition, like it's a side effect, but it can be caused by damage to the heart muscle or any condition that makes the heart pump harder than usual. And then. Um, Hearts just be gone. That's crazy. Every day he working. It he may never take Labor Day off. It may also be a sign of a prior heart attack. Hmm. Is that running the family? I, I think so. Heart yeah. attacks you? For sure. Isn't that crazy when something runs in the family? You're just like, you just have to like take that with a grain of salt. But like, oh, all right, breast cancer runs in the walls, genes. Cool. Yeah. I hope my tits don't. Can men get breast cancer? Don't clip this. I don't know how fucking the human body works. What What do you, what do you like, mean? Like, like, can men get breast cancer? Yes. Or do you got to, you can? Yes. Okay. Do they I've call got, some diff- chest cancer? I've got something. I don't know what it is. You ever felt something in there? Sometimes when I drink too much, I feel like I have it. I'm like, I don't know where my liver is, but I feel it beating extra today. Oh, yeah. If your liver is beating, <laughs> then, yeah, you probably need to take it in. Sometimes I just get pain in the middle of my chest. And then I remember a girl I was dating at the time. She's like, oh, it's heartburn. I was like, is it? It's been three days. I think it's just like... uh it could just be your bitch signal. You know what I'm saying? Like you could, we could just be little bitch. IBS, dude. I be bitch signal. <laughs> yeah, I be bitch signal. Right. But you, now. you got pain right there. Sometimes, dude. Yeah. What, what happens when you wake up? Is your body just good to go, or you just got pain? 
No, I think these days I fucking want to vape or... Are you off the vape still? Go down on a stranger. <laughs> That's a woman. In what order? Either one. I think just you want something to kind of get you going. One of the first porns I ever saw was a girl smoking a cigar out of her pussy. No, my God. Yeah. Really? Yeah, and it was like... And what was it for? It was like an advertise. Was it a... Uh, might have been from Marlboro. But I remember I was just so young. I was just like... I was turned on for both reasons because I wasn't old enough to smoke, but I also wasn't old enough to stroke. Come on now. Oh, yeah. So I saw the cigar and the vagina, and I was like, those are both so cool. Yeah. Yeah, it was wild. Oh, wow, yeah. Because I feel like there was always some kid who, like, like you knew how, he would show you porn, but then, the like, his older brother would be like, yeah, but you want to see that pussy smoke a hookah? Like, he had the next level. Yeah, yeah. That you next level see porn. The, Yeah, you want to see this labia throw a grenade? <laughs> You're like, damn, okay. This lady is in a hot yeah. tub making lasagna. He's like, oh, you want to see this uvula? Uh, eat a yeah. half a bag of Skittles. You're like, damn. Yeah, I don't. But like, I feel like one dude always had the porn, but like somebody close to him had next level porn. Yeah, you want to see this urethra do a zen? You're yeah, like, right. All oh, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Like the six milligrams. Oh shit. You know, I was in a car accident. Um, probably about four years ago. Some lady did a U turn and she didn't know how to do it. And she just, she U-turned right into me. It was more of a J. And I was at the end of the J. And I got just jacked up. That's what happened. If you're ever injured in a car accident or injured at all, and it's some type of accident, you can check out Morgan and Morgan. Morgan and Morgan is America's largest injury law firm. They have over 100 offices nationwide and more than 800 lawyers. With over $15 billion recovered for clients, Morgan & Morgan has a proven track record of fighting till you get your full and fair compensation. Submitting an injury claim with Morgan & Morgan is so easy, it's more like using an app than hiring a lawyer. With Morgan & Morgan, you can submit a claim without ever having to leave the couch. And you might not be able to, heck, if you're hurt. If you're ever injured, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. Their fee is free unless they win. For more information, go to forthepeople.com slash this past weekend or dial pound law. That's pound 529 from your cell phone. That's F-O-R the people dot com slash this past weekend or pound 529 from your cell phone. This is a paid advertisement. Blue Chew, you know it. You know when daddy wants it, he takes them blue chews. He likes them little wiener pills. You know that, boy. They deliver the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable form at a fraction of the cost. Blue Chew's tablets combat all forms of ED, so they can help. They can help men gain extra confidence for when it's time to perform. Wiener. Don't like swallowing pills? No problem. These are chewable. That's right. And guys, here's a special deal for you. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code Theo at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's Blue Chew, B L U E C H E W dot com. Promo code Theo to receive your first month. Free. Yeah, I feel like um for whatever reason, like that was like drug dealing back then. It was like it is like yeah. Somebody somebody always had like, oh, you know, when everybody weed, they're like, oh, this is the best in town. Somebody would always be like, yo, this is the best porn you can find. That's some random website. Really? You used to go you could go to whitehouse.com and it was porn. Because the White House was like dot gov is like the official one, but like I remember you oh, we got a head nod. See, yeah, you producers that, always Zach? Producers always know that porn life. Yeah, that was like the oldest trick in the book in like Dude, 2001. But that was so cool because my parents just thought I was doing homework every night. Exactly. They're like, oh, this motherfucker just loves George Bush. No, yeah. I love beating off to Bush. <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about? Because you could just go to whitehouse.com and your parents wouldn't associate it to. Wow. See, when I was a child, they didn't have a uh, internet. <laughs> So we had to, you had to fucking get somebody who knew something about some cooter. You had to fucking have somebody tell you or somebody describe it. Yeah. Or like you'd lay in the dark at night and one guy, his job was to kind of try and make the sounds of like yeah. a vagina. 
so oh, that yeah. other people could enjoy it, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like or if, like your boys. If we're doing a sleepover, you know? Yeah, of course. Or like one of your boys buries you at the beach and then he puts sand tits on you. Oh, yeah. You ever do that? And then you <laughs> yeah. put the two seashells over it so it's like scantily clad. Yeah. And then you have a little sand, like <laughs> some of the sand just cl- starts to like elevate above your wiener. Like, damn, brother. But, but if you see. can move earth with your wiener like that, that's boy, crazy. that's positive. My God, I bet some dad would look over and be like, that's my boy That's there. the tectonic plates, though. Like, Is that the earth just doing there? It's getting bricked up? Like, when, when there's earthquakes, is that the Lord's fucking bricked? Yeah, or just creating a vagina or something. Bumping and grinding? It's got to be, huh? So, you didn't have internet. I feel like my early on porn days was like, girls gone wild. Like, wh- like do you remember those commercials where the girls would have the stars over their nipples? Mm-hmm. I don't know what it was. Like, we had all seen Yes. It, it was like, what was, be- like, we just needed to know what was behind that star. Like, we knew what a tit looked like, but I'm like, I need to know what those look like. And whatever happened to that guy who created that site, Joe, what's his name? I think he's in jail. Yeah, I heard that. I think he actually. That or like probably like Tucson or something. Yeah. Tucson, which is basically just outdoor jail. <laughs> It's free play jail. <laughs> yeah. It's like no bars jail. Yeah. It's like you you can roam, but do you want to? <laughs> yeah. You just stay at this Chili's all day. Yeah, dude. <clears> I used <throat> to go to I used to go to uh school oh. in Tucson, man. Did you? You yeah. went to Dirty Tea? I went to Santa Rita High School, man, for one semester, and people would always fist fight in the car wash dog after school. You that box a, dog? You box? That is a we we did body blows at our school. Body blows, no face shots. Oh, really? Yeah, so you could just punch each other in the torso a bunch, but no face. Oh, it sounds like a really tough gang. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's <laughs> how we found the leader of our gang. <laughs> yeah, but one time, I ducked down and body blows got hit in the face, and that was on me. You took a body blow in the face? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. That was on me, though, because I ducked, because I was a bitch. Oh, yeah. I, dude, I'm not tough at all. Like, oh, I don't... bitching will really fucking... If you're a bitch, dude, it'll ruin... It can really... It won't ruin... It can I make things... I... It'll, it'll be interesting. Oh, dude, people knew I was a bitch. I was wearing really? heels. Really? Yeah, because I'd wear like Heelys with no heels. You know, they'd be like, mm. what are you wearing those dumbass shoes for? You can't even heel So the wheel on the back, but no wheel in it? Yeah, no wheel. It was just an empty area. Like, oh. I was just like, like anytime somebody's like, you want to go body blows? I'd be like, no, I, n- please no. Yeah. I don't want to do this. We do tech deck together. Yeah, if you say please no, that's bad, dude. Dude, I remember one time I uh, accidentally, sent, I went to hit a guy in the shoulder and he ducked and I hit his nose and, oh. he, had a, and he had a bloody nose. And then uh, he kept fucking me all day in uh, science. And then he's like, this Saturday, we're going to fight. I'm bringing my brother. Meet me there. And I didn't show up because obviously I didn't have an older brother. I had an older <laughs> sister with a fat rack. So I'm like, what the fuck yeah. am I supposed to do? And then on Monday, he's like, yo, you didn't show up. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> just let me just pencil in this ass beating real quick. Did you, were, were, did you fight a lot growing up? Or? Well, one thing at a time. One thing at a time. Oh, sorry. What are we talking about? Um, Trevor Wallace is here. Oh, yeah. Thank you, man. You have Dude, so much Dude, thanks for having air. me again. Yeah, yeah. It's, so, it's, fun. it's fun to see you, bro. Um, you're still crushing it on socials. I don't see how you keep doing it. I don't know, man. But I'm, you keep doing it. I'm trying to. It's amazing. Um, I want to get. I want to find out about this Joe guy, and then we can. Well, I want to. Oh, the guy from uh, yeah, Girls what Gone Wild. So, yeah, Girls Gone Wild. That's yeah, right. That checks out. Long story short, he filed for bankruptcy, moved to Mexico, and there are allegations that some of those girls were underage. So he's kind of just floating. It seems wow. like wow. Right there. He looks That's like him. that, and he's married to a woman, Abby Wilson. I think they're estranged, according to this article, because there was a there was a big expose on Girls Gone Wild last year, I believe. Mm. So since then, there's some extra heat on what, it. What uh, What does estranged mean? Um, they don't like each other anymore. Oh, yeah, separated from each other. So, cause yeah, remember that was the cra- and that was like where kind of they had like the girl. It was almost like where kind of bang bus started a little yeah. bit. Wouldn't they have girls in the van or something sometimes yeah. and like show your tits and be like, I don't want to, but I will in a minute, right? Right, right, right. And then they show me they put the stars and over the them stars. The yeah, like, well, censor. Well, yeah, that was like because now TikTok is it's kind of that, but without the tits, they just run up to a hot girl and be like, "What's your body count?" It's like, well, yeah. fuck all that. Put the stars on the tits. How do you pitch that idea? You got to be coked out as hell to go to your boy and be like, "You still got that? You still got that camcorder?" I know. I, I got bet they idea. were partying, dude. Oh, I've yeah. ran into girls who who got on this, who were on Girls Gone Wild over really? the years. Like, yeah, I was on Girls Gone Wild a while back. You Damn, know, just smoking out of their neck holes. Oh yeah, they're like, yeah, somebody fucked this hole into my neck. I like, you have a lung problem. They're like, nah, somebody just. Did sex right into my neck. Like, uh, I just needed more holes, more <laughs> ventilation. Put the drop top in the throat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Convertible right yeah. here. Would you put that in there if you could just close it without anybody noticing? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah, might as well. I think the human body should be upgraded. I'm 
like I got to pee so much. I'm like, how can I get more storage on my phone but not a bigger bladder? Oh, definitely. I need at least half a terabyte in one of my legs for this piss. <laughs> I also think my brain is at capacity. Oh, God. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. you got to kick out memories from like fourth grade just to learn how to parallel park at some point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's vital memories in fourth grade. You found out like National Geographic had tits in it. Oh, dude. When we saw them long, they had a set of long darks in one of those <laughs> National Geographic episodes because it was the first time you saw black tit in the area. Just a and, tit in general. Well, yeah, there wasn't a lot of like, first of all, the porn... When I first saw it, it was very, uh, it was like people, like it was people that had the same kind of haircut, kind of having sex from far away. And there was a lot of music in the background. You couldn't yeah. even really hear the people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there was a lot of like, bah, 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 and, bah, and you're bah, so bah, horned up, you don't even know if that music was from you or the TV. Bah, 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 oh, dude, it was just, but where's that knew, coming from? There was a lot, they did more with the soundtrack back then. Mm hmm. Like, they cared more about the yeah. music and the ambiance and went with it. They set the tone. Then, like, hearing what the people were saying. Yeah. And and then it evolved. Um, so you get some of that, but you had you didn't have your phones. So you couldn't just play porn wherever. So if you went outside or left the television or whatever, you were there was no porn. Yeah. At that point, you had to see somebody that could do some art. Or you'd have to, um, you know, we've talked about it before, but somebody had chiseled a set of... Uh, tits into a like a birch that had been hit by light and just like half of a tree by us oh that's great and so people would go out there and just cream out to that and would you like try to like hide the tree like you were to clear your browser history like would you try to like like undiscover it like that way nobody else could see it maybe somebody had like leaned a branch yeah, or something like just to hide it from you know because you don't want to like you want to gatekeep a little bit yeah like, I that's think my you, porn yeah this is mine but you get back there and you'd uh you could tell other people had been back there. There'd be a cigarette or oh, half yeah. a can of a uh, beanie weenie somebody, or something. Oh, yeah. Somebody chiseled, I came here, 1993. <laughs> Damn. Somebody just, you, it was like a heart. And it was just like Rick. But it would be like Rick <laughs> plus, but also just Rick, Rick again. Rick plus Rick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, Rick plus Rick dick. Yeah. Damn. Like, that's, yeah, Rick's I, I feel here. like when you were younger, you didn't look for porn. Porn just found mm -hmm. you. Like, you wouldn't be looking for, like, you just open up a book and you're like, oh, damn, I got tits on page 48. It blew your, I mean, you would get porn wherever you could. Like, it, in science, right. sex ed was such a, like, people would dress up. I mean, I were, you know, <laughs> people would wear their Sunday best, but wear cologne to sex. You know, it would be like. Yeah, you guys it, knew when it was? Well, yeah, you knew the year that it was. Wow. And you were like, God, are we, we didn't know ready? What? And I remember people outside of the fucking classroom like slapping each other in the cheeks. You know, it's one guy putting ice on another guy's like neck and back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it was crazy. He threw his neck out when he learned tomorrow. Sex yeah, like, at, oh fuck. Yeah, like Mike Brown was his coach. He was like he was his he, like he had a corner man. Really? You See, know, like, we get in there. We didn't get no like like lead up to it. It was just like, all right, class, get your dicks out. It's sex ed day. Like it, there was no build up. Like we just learned. Like we had no idea. Wow. So they just sprung it on us. And then we'd have to play it cool, you know? Do you remember the first time that you were attractive to a woman? I do. Or were you always the kid that was like, kind of got the girls some? No, I never, I never really got a lot of women. Um, I do remember the first time this, like the first girl that came back with a rack after summer, that was like, God, that was big. That was like when they build a new like Tesla charger station in town. You're like, everybody knew about it. Oh, this girl yeah. Jamie, she showed up in sixth grade and she was racked out. And like it was a talk. The teacher was like trying to talk about like long division. We're like, fuck all this. Have you seen the C cups? Yeah. Fuck all this. Even the teacher was like, God damn. Yeah. Have you seen the square root was, of them fucking <laughs> <laughs> those fucking long nuggets? D squared, yeah. yeah. <laughs> how much can how big can tits be on a and I don't want to say on a child, because we've said this kind of stuff before and but this is what we're looking up. Do you understand what I'm saying? All right. See, yeah. this is the problem. Yeah, go with incognito. Yeah, that, <laughs> see, that's what you have to do is is before you type, you say for a podcast, <laughs> and then colon, and then do it. Yeah, this is your internet. Dude. What? Yeah, or just because I'm not, I'm not curious, and I'll never <laughs> look anywhere. <clears throat> you but, gotta open the browser, just Chris Hansen with two Glocks. <laughs> <laughs> you interviewed him, yeah? Yeah. Okay. The cool. guy say, yeah, the guy stopped hundreds of pedophiles, man. Yeah, there was an episode where his friend walked in. Uh uh. Yeah, he's like, oh fuck, is that so and so? That's got to be tough. Hmm. Yeah. What happens, Zach? 
Yeah, I I'm, I don't have details on this question yet. Well, what do you get if you put that in? Uh, Texans Children's Hospital breast development questions. Okay. Well, this is kind of like what you said. If you go back one page. Oh, here's a good question. Why are my breasts big? First of all, it should be plural at a young age. But that's kind of what you had, but with a with a wiener. That's true. So that's a good point, actually. So imagine going to bed one night and you can't lay all the way down because you suddenly have tits. That's got to be yeah crazy for a girl. Can't you can't get massage? You can't do anything. You're just up. You're just always planking. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's crazy, dude. Whole life is a plank. Yeah, I don't know, man. Yeah. Dude, I, I was a late bloomer. I wanted. Uh, Were I, you really? Yeah, I remember okay. in PE, everybody had like deodorant and like armpit hair. Oh, yeah. Dude, I, so I had this like giant stuffed animal in my room. Probably made love to it. Definitely made love to it. And I used to cut the hair off it and put it in my armpit because I wanted armpit hair that bad. Just see what it looked like. Oh yeah. Yeah, and, it, and what the, color was it? It was black. So it didn't match any of my ginger tones at all. But I'd put water on my armpit, then I put it in there, and I'd look in the mirror mm. and be like, dude, this is. This could be me one day. Yeah. And I still do that to this day. I love that. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't, you weren't a late bloomer? If you had implants, arm hair, uh, <laughs> armpit hair. If you had armpit hair implants. Yeah. Oh, dude, I was just putting Rogaine on every morning. Is that Old Spice? No, it's Rogaine. Dude, I distinctly remember, like you said, when you went to PE and somebody had deodorant for the first oh, time dude. that was a kid, it blew your mind. You're like, oh, now we have to get deodorant. Yeah. This is where I learned, like, I put okay, on- yeah, I use deodorant. Like, what do you use? You know, and you just start, you would name, like, uh, um, like, duh, like, uh, just, yeah, exactly. Dish soap or something. You would name, like, the wrong <laughs> yeah, yeah, thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I remember just, I wanted to. Yeah, like Reebok. What do you guys use? Reebok? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you, roll on? Is that Axe? Yeah. yeah, no, I use a machete. I, every day <laughs> I saw somebody doing that. Like, I remember the first day I had armpit sweat. I was excited. I was like, this is puberty. Yeah. It's knocking. You know? I remember when I had, like, a little, like, Ooh. blonde mustache. Yeah. I was, I'm not shaving this shit. I'd rather look like I sell used taquitos with oh, this mustache. Oh, yeah, dude. Oh, especially on a guy like, I think yeah. redheaded guys are guys that that lean Auburn or gin. Yeah, lean right? more red. Or gangers, they call them. Um, yep. They uh, are, you guys are almost adopted into the black community. I feel like you guys are. We do get shit on a lot. No, no. A lot of like wiggas, as they say, which is uh-huh. a popular term from yeah. the past 100 or 150 years. It, it you guys are often they're often gingers or gangers. Yeah, I I do feel that I do. Yeah, my first job I was the only white guy there when I first moved to LA. It was like eighty black dudes and me, and it was one of the best jobs of my life. I, they respect you guys a lot more. I think. Let's pull up wiggas and see what they've been doing, if you don't mind, <laughs> or see uh like Let's where they uh, pull up their S corp. What have they been doing? <laughs> been selling whippets and just put click on images and let's see who we get. Yeah, that's what is. And this is where the girls okay, gone the wild guy one? should be. Is that Hollywood Wiggers? What is that? Wait a sec. Yeah, that sounds like that's uh, Adam Devine, isn't it? It does look like him. San Diego does have a high breed of this. Now type there of person, you go. I think. Where do you think spawns this person? What city comes to mind when you think of this? I think of Little Rock. Oh yes, Little Rock. Something about that. Yeah, my friend Justin is from Arkansas, and uh. He likes to gun down them gobblers over there, but he said that there is a lot of um, wig esque. So, what are these behavior that are also on here? This has nothing to do with the white guy with the orange Camaro. Yeah, let's go to this. I diagram. guess there's a, a popular diagram called the Wiggers diagram. Um, well, what is that? It's a sty- standard diagram used in cardiac physiologically, named after Dr. Carl J. Wiggers. Dude, come oh, on, Carl, <laughs> Carl J. Dude, you got to go by just Carl J at that point. So people are going to learn about this in school? I mean, dude, our chart looked d- way different. It was a ginger dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it cross-sectioned with a UNC uh, yeah. basketball jersey. And he had a yo-yo and a vape for some <laughs> yeah, reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be so funny if you open up that page. And he drove a Honda Civic, dude, which was the number one car. Yeah. But he, like, chipped off the word Civic and put, like, BMW logos <laughs> yeah. on there. There's nothing better than that. When somebody takes, like, the Chrysler 300 puts, like, a Bentley logo on it. Yeah. Those people come off insane, but I respect it. Oh, I respect that too. It's just like you're, because that's all the car is sometimes is just an extra emblem, you know? Yeah, 100%. Mm. What was your first car? My first car was a 1984 Ford Escort, and I paid cash for it. Somebody stole the passenger seat. (laughs) They just didn't want you in that carpool lane or what? I don't know what the issue was. 
I just remember picking people up and they had to get in and there was, it was like a bus. You were in the bus. You were the bus driver up front. And the people yeah. had to walk past. You, they pay you a fare. <laughs> they were like all aboard. <laughs> just one <laughs> seat in the back. <laughs> just one lady. You're like, oh, I'll just get right there. Um, but so I want to talk more about that. Uh, yeah, whenever you hit puberty, man, that shit was wild. I remember. It feels like you, you ever put a a, a, a a Mentos and a Diet Pepsi or Diet Coke. Yeah, and it starts to bubble up at first. That's what it feels like. Your body's doing. It's starting to bubble up at first. I think I remembered, I'm trying to think if I remember getting body hair, maybe a little on my chest, like in the crack of my chest. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got a few of those. Um, oh, right here you get that happy trail. And that's, cr you want to keep it. <clears throat> you want to, you can't wait to go to the pool and take your shirt off. Yeah, dude. Some people even put a little barrette. A lot of the brothers will put a little barrette on it. <laughs> little bow tie down there. Yeah, just something gentleman. small, nothing yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, just something chill, something to flex a little. I grew up in kind of like a white and urban area, so you'd have, dude. I remember they had a handicapped dude, a black dude, and he was, uh, his he was, uh, his legs weren't didn't work, and they had <laughs> braided his fucking legs around each other. Yeah, you should. Yeah, yeah, you know I, that's what I would do. Or I put underglow on him, on oh, my legs. Really? I would, like personally. on the bottom so they yeah, shine personally. a little. Personally, yeah, because then it looks like the Lord's carrying me. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you right? I've never seen a wheelchair. With underglow. But if your legs had it, wouldn't you be like, oh, he's not walking because he can float? <laughs> I don't know, man. I just I saw a car with underglow recently driving uh, from the IE, the Inland Empire, and it brought me back. God, it's like beautiful. Like the spinners era. I, th I think they should have pimped my wheelchair, and um, that's just me trying to help out. Them spree wells. Yeah, well, you'll see sometimes those, uh, a lot of dudes who are in wheelchairs, they'll do that dolphin where they oh, kind of yeah. pull up and they'll let the wheels oh, spin. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Those dudes know what they're doing. The but again, yeah. but if I spent my life in a wheelchair, I'd get bored after a while. I'd definitely want to. You think? I think so. I, I definitely want to learn the tricks. Sometimes I'll pretend like this. Like I'll, like even if I'm like at a uh, dinner or something or like I'm been at a table for a while and people don't, you know, I'll kind of <laughs> do this, you know, but. <laughs> Looks like you're about to start a bobsled. Yeah. <laughs> just for fun. Yeah. Just to let people know that you st you could be if you needed to. But yeah, I think I'm trying to remember to what that was like. It's crazy that like puberty happens to your body and you don't even, you're not like documenting every day. It's like it's because it's unreal. Yeah, it, it feels like you're just waiting in line and eventually it's like the Lord being like, you better get some pubes. And it, But it's a slow process. It's not like you walk up to the front door and they stamp your puberty card. It's like a slow little bit of this, little bit of that. The voice cracks. If When your voice cracked in class, I mean, that was mm -hmm. one of the worst days of my life. Especially well, late. Oh yeah. yeah. When I was at 17, you get your ass beat at noon for sure. Yeah. It's crazy. Mm. Yeah, that man would start to fucking break out of you. It's almost yeah, like the Incredible Hulk when he breaks through the yeah. his own clothing. It's like when snakes uh, shed a little bit, but it's just yeah. the manliness is coming out. Yeah, you'd be like, "Can we go get some?" I'm trying to fuck, you know, <laughs> just like you're like, "Whoa, whoa, what happened?" And um, then you try to do that voice again, but you can't do it. Yeah. You're trying to get back to here. Yeah, you couldn't do and it. Then you try to get back. To you could never do it. You remember coming to school and one kid had like just gone way past puberty, like he was oh, like oh, seven. Yeah. Dude, he had like arthritis. I'm like, you missed like 19 yeah. stages. He had a beard. Yeah, he had a beard. There and was, that kid always had to buy beer then. Dude, there was a guy, uh, his name was Chuck, and he had uh, a full facial hair in ninth grade, and he was dating an eighth grader. Mm -hmm. And he, this is a hilarious story. And if you're from my hometown, you know the story. He was dating this chick, and he, they did anal. And she had to miss school the next day. No way. Yeah, this is ninth grade, bro. I'd barely even seen one of my cocks. Like, I... I was so nerd, like so people I, must have been freaking out, dude. Right? This guy was like Dan Bilzerian of ninth grade. I was looking at him like, "Tell me your secrets." Oh, and he used to not wear uh, boxers. He'd wear just denim, just denim on dick, no boxers, raw dogging it, oh my raw dogging that God. denim, dude. It was crazy. But the girl literally had to miss school the next day because she couldn't walk. No, and he and he works at a restaurant now, but yeah, he does. Yeah, he's serving it up. But wow, that t like that guy was so many levels. I had a puberty than I was. Yeah. It was crazy. Oh, when you heard about the first guy that had sex, kind of like, like I remember we came back from seventh grade and some kid had had sex, apparently yeah. like on a pool chair or something. Yeah, it was always outside. And people were losing their mind. People didn't know what to do. People were like trying to like install a pool at the school. Oh. Like people had- Sign like, my beach ball. Like yeah, everything. Just banana, because they just- 
it's like you want to get as close to you can as you can to sex, right. you know? Well, it's like the first person that went to the moon, everybody was just like, tell me how you did it. What was it like in there? Like, could you really like bounce around? Did you feel like yourself? Well, I met the guy that did it, man. The the green screen? Buzz Aldrin. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You met him? Yeah. Wow. What did he say it was like? Mm. Do you think it was real? Oh, well, I'll tell you this, man. If I went out, I, I remember this. When I looked at him, <laughs> it didn't seem like he'd been to the moon. What gave it away? Just something. Just he was describing it like a like a twelve year old talking about tits. Yeah, it was uh, pretty cool. It was bouncy. <laughs> yeah. You know, there, there was, it was they were bigger than I thought. Yeah, but I could handle it. You didn't see it in his eyes. Yeah, there's just something. He just uh, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? You if I met if I met somebody who'd been to the who'd yeah. been to the gala uh, the Galapico? galaxy or whatever, I oh, would yeah. know. Right. Well, it's I'm, like somebody like if, if I told you I've been to jail, you would look at my body and be like, you have not. Right. You have picked up a friend from juvie, but that is the most. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. there's something about like an energy. So I, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Maybe you zoomed with like a um, like a PO or something. Yeah, but exactly. You haven't, been, you haven't done yeah. any time. Shook a man's hand who used to date a guy. In jail. So that was the thing for me. And I'm not discrediting the space program or NASA, but that's just what I thought. My grandpa about. used to work for NASA. Uh -uh. Yeah. He was a veteran and worked for NASA. Really? He was like the manliest guy. Like he, he always wore the same outfit every day. He was jacked at like sixty five. Worked for NASA and fought in war. I was like, that's, that's crazy. Incredible. I'm a fucking TikToker. Like what? Like this guy has lived a legacy. Yeah. He's one time I saw him eat an orange with the peel on <gasps> whole thing like an apple, and the thing he said after was like the most badass thing. He was like, when you're in the the war, you have an option. You can either like peel your orange, and you know take your eye off what's going on, or you can risk getting your face peeled by a caliber. I'd never heard something so cool in my life. Wow. Yeah, it was really cool. I, he, he was a great man. Was he? Yeah. And like, if I like ever disrespected my mom, he, like, my mom had like a bodyguard. If I ever disrespected my mom or said something like, I don't want to eat the fucking frozen peas. It tastes like shit. He'd be like, he'd always put something down, right? Oh. And then about be, like, be like, don't you treat my daughter that way. And I could just, he wouldn't hit me, but he, mentally he did. Yeah. He was the manliest man I knew. Fuck, that's amazing, man. What was his name? Bert. Bert. That's a good name. Yeah. No, he was he was awesome. Wow, man, that's really neat, dude. And uh, how did he pass away? Sage. Oh, Bert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Super cool, man. And he fought in the war, so he would uh, he would always say crazy shit in the car. Yeah. And I was too young and noticed at the time, but my mom would always be like, "You can't, you can't say that anymore. You could, that's you shouldn't be saying that anymore." I should be sitting in the back. It was like a live Jerry Springer. It was awesome. Yeah. Well, yeah, like I, I remember Springer. watching football. Yeah, with my grandfather, and he'd been in one of the wars. And the guy would like they'd be like the guy ran a slant or whatever, and he'd be like, "If a slant runs by here, <laughs> they'll fucking know what's going on." Like he would say crazy shit. I'm like, "Whoa, dude, that's dude, not." You know, you just anybody that kind of crazy. fought in the war. I try to make a joke about that on stage one time. I was like, anybody that fought in the war, like you're just like kind of okay with them being like slightly a little uh, prejudice or something, you might be like, you're just like, ah, they, they're in the war. They, they, they fought for the country, you know? But if they didn't, like if they didn't fight a war and they said the same shit, you'd be like, yo, fucking pull that man's life alert. That's yeah. fucked up. But if you notice how to use a bayonet, you're like, yeah, all right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Literally, you know, this is between him and the Lord right now. <laughs> don't intercept what he's trying to think. I don't know. You know, if you're selling things, you have to get them to the customer. That's right. If you sell something, you sell a shiffy robe. You sell a, a little omelet maker, a cute one that makes the omelets into shapes, Christmas ornament shapes or whatever, little pumpkins, whatever. You got to ship your product. Ship Station can help. That's right. If you're an e-commerce business owner, shipping is no longer a manual task thanks to Ship Station. Effortless integration anywhere you sell online, including Amazon, eBay, Shopify, Etsy, and more. And with enterprise solutions that make warehouse optimization easy, ShipStation scales when you do. Get up to 84% off USPS and UPS rates. And if that's not enough, use my promo code to try ShipStation free for two months. Go to ShipStation.com and use code T-H-E-O today and sign up for your free 60-day trial. That's ShipStation.com, code Theo. Keep your hair. Do you have hair? Who has hair, huh? Raise your hand. If you don't, that's okay. There's help. If you're losing your hair, 
More than 50 million men in the U.S. suffer from MPB, baby. Male pattern baldness, that's what they call it. Well, Keeps has more five-star reviews than any of its competitors. It's expert-recommended hair loss treatments. They will personalize a treatment plan for you by a licensed medical provider. You can easily subscribe to Keeps. You get refill reminders. It's low cost. You want to keep that hair. You want to stay wigging around, homie. You want to be wigged out. They'll do it. That's right. Keeps helps men keep their hair and prevent hair loss. That's what it does. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Theo to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash T-H-E-O to get your first month free. Keeps dot com slash Theo. Dude, it is kind of crazy how like like people that like serve the country and help protect the country and like yep. establish the borders and like um they kind of throw them by the wayside as they get older because like they're like or here's what I'm saying is it, it's interesting how like like our parents might have like different views than like probably a lot of younger generation has, right? Mm-hmm. Um, probably a lot of more old fashioned views, but their parents like went off to war to like protect like the the free the safety of the nation and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So when they're like pissed off about the border, it's like you kind of have to respect where they're coming from. If they had a parent that died somewhere defending the border, you know what I'm saying, right. or like establishing the land of America, yeah. it's like that. A lot of times that stuff gets so like not even factored into the way that people behave, like. Yeah, I could understand if what like my mom feels certain ways about like um protecting like the freedoms of America and like defending our border and like looking out for America first if she had a f- grandfather or a father that was gone for fucking right. 8 months or a year out of her life because yeah. he was out defending it or whatever. The problem you know? is when there's the disconnect when uh after generations yeah. it fades away you know if your dad was that guy then it's very strong to you and now when you have the child it's like it gets less and less and now it's like i hear about the war and i'm like yeah but like what about the tiktok algorithm like yeah. that's the war i'm fighting yeah you know, what so about the, war yeah minecraft yeah. <laughs> exactly like, yeah somebody who's like a better gamer now is like better than like um who was that general during like iraq or something that was uh colin powell David Petra- oh, colin. or petraeus yeah David Petraeus. Petraeus now is it like is like the same as like some who's like one of the best gamers right now? Uh, I know Ninja was big or like all the Phase Clan dudes, like uh, Shinobi uh. or somebody, you yeah. know, or whoever. <clears throat> Wolf it, Gang, you know, Puck, Yeah, it's that disconnect where it's like it's. Well, I mean, it's like now it's like I I've done a lot of like college shows, and eighty percent of the audience wasn't alive for nine eleven, and it's like. You say 9-11 to them and it's just like a date to them. And it like blows my mind. But it's like, yeah, that was me learning about World War II. I don't, I don't know. I was in a nutsack somewhere, yeah. balled up, yeah, waiting for my draft. Yeah. So it's just a time thing, I think. But it is bizarre. Well, it's crazy too how we just don't even like, refl- yeah, it, it is wild how much things change. And then how like we kind of don't take into account what other people like what their generation was like, you know, Correct. it's almost like you're, they're suddenly like wrong just because they're getting older or because, right. um, like times have kind of changed, you know? Yeah. Um, but anyway, what else can we talk about? That's a little more fucking normal, dude. What else is going on in the news? Zach, a lot of stuff, huh? Yeah, we got a couple stories here. I guess a former bodyguard's launching a ride-sharing app where the drivers will be armed with guns. Oh, I heard about this in Atlanta, right? Yeah, yeah. I would use that, but I would go to places where you wouldn't need a bodyguard just to just feel cool. It's called Black Wolf. Black Wolf. Wow. An app designed to rival Uber and Lyft recently launched in Atlanta and is about to drop in New York. Uh, Kerry King Brown revealed he created the app as a necessary evil. Who are mostly on the news getting robbed, getting raped, the average person. Well, yeah, who else is it going to be? <laughs> <laughs> senators? Yeah, yeah. You could take down a senator pretty easy, though. But who else is going to be animals or something? Like, who yeah. else? Like, <laughs> yeah, that's, that is interesting. Like, wh- where would you take this? Like, what's something you'd be going to? Like, if I was going oh, to, like, a Memphis. kid rock con- Yep. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
I mean, easily Memphis, dude. Uh, <laughs> Shout out Memphis. A Raiders game. Raiders game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that, um, I think maybe like a Kid Rock cover band concert. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah, I could possibly see it needing for that, too. So what happens? They just send you with a driver with a gun? Because I think most Uber drivers, if you go to like Sacramento, probably just have a gun on them. Yeah. It seems like the drivers are specially trained. Like they mentioned, the, one of the drivers is a private investigator and previously worked as a bodyguard. So it's not that just they have the gun. It's like they're professionally trained protectors. Wow. Okay, got it. So what I'm creating is a necessary evil. It's a necessity, it says. Um, Brown is no ordinary driver and he's no regular man with a plan. He is a private investigator and has worked as a bodyguard for celebrities and politicians. He wants to share his own brand of executive protection with the world. So this is one of those things I think you're starting to see like, you know, like there's, there's too many insanely rich people out there, I think. Yeah. You know, like, walking around. Right. I think there should be a cap on how much money that you can make. Then what? You lose it and then get back up. Like if you overshoot in 21. Oh, yeah. That's a good call. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, but here's what happens. I think they then like sis, like the town or wherever you're from lets you get something like named after you. Like there's some oh, like yeah. there's some value that's given to you because of the way you're creating stuff or you have to give more to your employee like i don't know something like uh, but i think part of it is like you're just starting to see like a lot of rich people are probably getting scared of people that are like shooting at them what do you think i mean yeah that's a huge problem here in la like rich people are getting robbed all the time oh in, like, West yeah Hollywood they wear and like a Hills. rolex on rodeo and so runs up and grabs it yeah, yeah. that's the people gonna get this it's not gonna be he says it's for regular people but what regular person's gonna get that yeah unless they're going to prom or something they don't want somebody else like, funny hitting on their chick or something yeah i don't i don't know when i don't even know when i would like use that or like when i would feel like oh fuck you know maybe black friday will show up to walmart people be shooting over flat screens oh yeah. shooting over an air fryer yeah so maybe i pull up with that there yeah i think it's just well it's going to become first of all it's going to become a niche thing that rich people are going to do yeah. So rich people who have a ton of extra expendable income, they just want to spend it any way they can to look even richer. If you could hire somebody to be with you at all times, who would it be? Would it be like a bodyguard, an escort, uh, maybe like a, somebody who knows a lot about like zoo animals? Like, mm. What do you think it would be? Ooh, that's a good question. I'm thinking, I would need like a middle, like somebody, like a really buff mom, I think. Oh, I'd hire like a total wigger to hang out with me all day. Like my boy Brian Purvis that I grew up with, dog. Who's Brian Purvis? R.I.P. Man. Oh, what happened? No, he's not dead, but he is in uh, <laughs> he's in jail for so long that it's like <laughs> it might as well be. No, that is could, interesting. Nobody on the outside is gonna get to know him. You know, that is wild. If you're in jail for life, where's he right there, baby? That's him. Yeah. Oh wow, he got the see. If that guy told me he's been to the moon, yeah, I wouldn't believe him, but I would buy Molly off him. Yeah, he's got though. I got that good Molly on him. He got those moon rocks. Yeah. Oh, so what happened? Um, attempted murder. I could just, I would like to hang out with him, bro, or just like some real, like, just some dude that's real, like as real as it can get. Like he's always rubbing his hands. Yeah, some dude that's as real as he yeah. can get, bro. Some dude that, uh, he can just, he smell has to it. move his head side to side like this yeah. to even move forward or to yeah. come up with a good idea. Yeah, you ask him what smooth he wants. And he's like, ah, yeah. You know, he's thinking about yeah. catalytic mm, converters mm, and shit. Mm, mm. Yeah, he doesn't blink unless he's, you know, he sees you blink. He's fucking right. You know, he has to remind himself to blink <laughs> yeah, on his hand. It says yeah. blink, and he goes, "Yeah, his whoop raise up yeah, goes yeah, off." Yeah, yeah, yeah. He always knows a good like ICP playlist. Oh, dude, his uh, his uh, his um house arrest bracelet. Oh yeah, it's got the Wu Tang logo on it. <laughs> yeah, it makes a special beep when he walks through a grocery <laughs> store entrance. Yeah, yeah. That's how he does Apple Pay with an ankle monitor. Yeah, it's crazy, dude. Damn. He just puts his fucking uh, his British knight up on the. Um, you ever been arrested? Yeah, I've been really? arrested, man. I didn't know that. We was at a house somewhere, and the cops came in, and they went upstairs, right? This is the crazy thing. And they bring a kid down from upstairs. Everybody's high downstairs. You had no idea who the kid was? No. And everybody's like, who the fuck here has a kid? Nobody had a kid, right? It was, we were kids. Right. They bring like a sleeping kid with like a- um, Do you think they tried to plan it on you? You know it how- It totally seemed like, like a- Like when somebody gets like shot and they sprinkle coke on him? Yeah. Oh, it was a cokehead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. These kids were funneling kids. But like, yeah, with the kid, it was like, he was like rubbing his eye 
and he had on like a little nightgown. I mean, yeah, it seemed like some out of like a Charles Dickens novel. Yeah, or I was gonna say kids are always rubbing their eyes in movies. Yeah, so it seemed really like a setup in Mississippi, and so we had to go stay in for the night. I'm trying to think if there was another time. I feel like I did another time. I got put in the back of a cop car for teeping a house in eighth grade. Suburb shit. Wow. Yeah, what a, gang was that? Oh, dude, fucking Charmin Ultra. Fucking hard Charmin? Yeah, single ply. Bitch. Ooh, wow. Damn, <laughs> y'all were single ply, huh? Yeah, we were oh, well, about you that. went through some shit. Yeah, a little. Nah. It was, it was some shit went through you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Fingers went through some shit, yeah. But I was remember me and my friend Matt had, I had a backpack on, mm. and if you see any kid with a backpack at oh, four in the morning, yeah. he ain't going to school. Yeah. <laughs> so the cop just pulled over, and I had like four rolls on me, just charming. Oh. Yeah, my parents were probably more so pissed that I was throwing the nice toilet paper. Yeah, but yeah, the cops were like, "What are you doing?" And then I had to go wake my parents up, and then the, my parents had to go talk to the cop. And my neighbor at the time was the sheriff. That's the only reason we like got anything. They're like, "Oh shit, I know your neighbor. That's." That's the shit, you know? Yeah. And so they just, I don't know how that helped, but uh, yeah, that was it. That's all I did was waking my parents. Like, it was a cop downstairs. I'm like, the fuck? That was it. Damn. That was such a weird time as a kid when you had to go get your parents up at night. Remember that? Oh, yeah. Because like, yeah. you would go open, you'd have to open their door, go in by their, and you knew they were asleep. Right. And it was that moment where you're like, how do I time where I knock? Maybe they're like, not, like, maybe I'll give them an extra five seconds to sleep yeah. or something. Yeah. How do you like, and then you're like, mom, yeah. She's like, you have another nightmare? Uh, no. Um, There's a um, squad car out front. Cops are here. Yeah, and your dad was in some weird PJs, and yeah, his like dick was probably flopping the out. What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, it was weird. I don't I don't think I got in trouble for that. I think it was just, I don't even I don't even remember what happened. Yeah, that that all that time was just interesting, man. What were we talking about on the news that happened there? Atlanta. Oh, yeah, Atlanta. So, yeah, I'm just wondering, yeah, I think you're just going to start seeing more rich people get... Um, like special services. Yeah. Just to spend their money because they have to. I wonder if it's just going to get so mainstream. Like imagine where like these dudes aren't doing any combat. Like these dudes are trained tactically to like fuck somebody up. But now you're just dropping somebody off at LAX. Like I get bored. I'm like, I know how to shoot a gun. Why are you making me drive to, you know, American Airlines? Well, and at a certain point, those guys are going to want to shoot guns. Yeah, I think they should. So they're going to want to pop off on somebody. They're going to want to. Um... Yeah. Can you get the trunk for me? <laughs> They're going to want to put a piece into somebody. They're going to want to put a free filling in somebody's fucking rib cage. Yeah, because I think they're just going to be like loading in that car. Like, I want to fucking hit someone. Yeah. Or they might start some beef. Well, shit's getting weird. Now, I notice when I uh, walk up to a car now, mm -hmm. it used to be you could walk up, tap, some, tap on the window, or ask somebody a question. Seems crazy to do now. Doesn't it? Yeah. Bro, uh, the other day I'm walking up to a car and I was like, oh my God. Well, you uh, also look person, like somebody who's going to sell you some, like, fake fish tickets. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, bro? I'll find, or some fake mat, or some fake fish. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like... <laughs> Y'all fuck with these? It's just a hamster with a fin <laughs> on the back? <laughs> yeah. So, wait, what were you saying? I, I cut you off. I'm yeah, it's bad. either Modest Yahoo or Mahi Mahi, dude. You're yeah, fucking, yeah, yeah. You're buying something. Yeah, so you walked into a car, and what happened? I didn't mean to cut but you off. But it spooked me out. I was like, oh, my God. If this person would have just drawn on me yeah. and shot me, there would have been a case for them that this guy came up on my car, whether or not I had a weapon or not. Yeah. there would It wouldn't have been just like an open shut thing of like you shooting a stranger. Right. You approach my bubble. Remember that? And people say, get out of my bubble. That was yeah. some mom shit. But so what do you do if you're like at a red light and somebody like walks up to your car? Do you, do you break eye? Do you keep your eyes on the road? Or you talk with them? Or you just look forward or... Like, it is weird. Like, you, you just stand there and you're like, pretend you're at the wheel and you're just like pretending that they're not there or do you interact? I mean, if they come up to the window of yeah, your car, yeah, yeah. like, who are they? Why would someone do that? Just somebody looking for money. Okay. Or blow job. Oh, well, that's almost different because you almost are kind of expecting it. In that moment, I feel like at a stoplight, you're kind of looking around. I think for me, like, there were cars in a parking lot, they were yeah. parked. And what happened was, I thought I walked up to, we had a rental car. I thought I would walk up to the rental oh. car. I walked up to the wrong car. But I walked up and kind of like, was by, I mean, I'm like right by the glass. There's somebody sitting in that car. And I'm like, if that person, years ago, it would have just been like, oh, I'm so sorry, it's an accident. But now it's like their windows are all tinted, everything. So it's like, I don't know. It true. just felt like if they shot me, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be crazy. Yeah, you're you know? like last words would be like, I get it. I, it does feel like the brain just trains you that anytime like somebody comes up to your car, you should be like, oh, like, like fight or flight immediately. But everybody's scared now, I feel like. And we're building up this, um, 
But sometimes you go to like a real small town and they're like the opposite. Like you walk up, they're like, do you need some honey? I remember I was doing a show. That's in, a good point. I was in Butte, Montana, and there's a population of like 456, maybe 450 for today. But the I was walking from the Walmart to my hotel yeah. and this lady drives by and she goes, do you need help? And I was like, and like, this is like very early in my career. So I thought I was like hot shit. And I was like, oh, maybe she recognized me. And she, I was like, no, what's up? She's like, oh, anytime you see somebody walking in this town, that means something, you know, something bad happened. And I was just helping you out. And that was that. Yeah. Uh, no offers of sex or nothing. Mm, yeah. Yeah. I think that that's a good point. So I'm thinking from more of like a city perspective. Where was this at? This was in uh, Phoenix. Okay. Yeah. There's a lot of walking up to cars out there. But I just had never thought that before. I'd never thought that before. Like if somebody, if I walk up somebody's car that they would, sh if they did shoot me or the, I just had never thought that there was that much fear in the air or like uh yeah, weird energy and like uncertainty. I think people are just very nervous about what other people are capable of. Yeah, that is true. Um, I think everyone's just like on the heightened senses. Yeah. I think some of it's because you see a lot of clips of people like beating people up on like Twitter and stuff. Do you <laughs> ever see any of that stuff? Oh, of course. Twitter is just tits and people getting knocked out. Yeah. Which is pretty good combo. Yeah. It's, like, <laughs> it's like the new Spike TV. <laughs> yeah, it is. Where the fuck is Spike TV? I miss that shit. Mansers? Every time it'd be like, my girlfriend is talking too much. I'd be like, fucking divorce that bitch. <laughs> and the Spike TV. We'll be back to you after this Jack Link's beef jerky commercial. Yeah, yeah. I miss Spike TV. That was just like creatine for the soul. Dude, Spike TV was so fucking good. It was like, um, they had like cat, like, um, I don't even know. I, they were like, uh, oh, watch this guy get his, uh, get a root canal done with a forklift, you yeah, know? Yeah. Like, and he does oh, it himself. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they had the show, uh, A Thousand Ways to Die. Oh, I don't really you ever see that? that. It, they would just find random cases around the world, then they would hire reenactment up. actors to it? be like, yeah, be like, this guy was climbing the Christmas tree to try to put the final thing on the ornament and got, you know, electrocuted in the cock. Oh. Yeah, it was a really weird show. They would just reenact how random deaths would happen. I wonder if there's like one actor that does a lot of the death reenactments, you know? Oh, there he was a go to guy on a call. Yeah. Now he's just at a bar like, you ever seen A Thousand Ways to Die? That was me. Yeah, it was me. 40 of them were me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What other shows does Spike TV have? I, I just remember the name and the feeling associated with well, the Well, they channel. had early UFC, I think it was on Spike TV, wasn't it? Was it UFC or just a bunch of dudes fighting in front of a red lobster? Uh, I think it could have been either one. Dude. That's Maine that you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. There's nothing better than a, like a raw street fight. You ever just been driving by and see a fight? It may have been a ring cam from Maine. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah, dude. Bro, I was in New York the other day, right? So there's like two home, there's like a homeless dude and what we thought was like a regular dude. Like we're sitting outside of a cafe mm -hmm. and I don't go to cafes, dude, because they're gay, right? My buddy wanted to go. Yeah, I was going to say, I can't see you sitting there sipping a little cappuccino with a pinky out. Yeah, I was just, mid dude, I was buying Coke and then selling it to other people. I don't do it anymore, but yeah, I'll, exactly. I'll yeah, middle yeah, a few yeah, grams, yeah. you know, to say. <laughs> Fucking keep me hype, right? <laughs> right, just to stay cool at the cafe. <laughs> yeah, 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 what well, can I give you an eight ball? <laughs> <laughs> you want it iced? <laughs> so two, we saw some dudes, and me and my buddy Kevin were like, all right, well, let's go see what's going on here. So we get up from our little table. They're and the tables in New York are like small, this, especially like, cafes. How fucking small is this table? Yeah, it's insane. I do like the arguments when you're like sitting at a table at a restaurant in New York. You can hear the people like directly to your yeah. left and right. Couples aren't doing well in New York. No. Which I get, there's a lot of hot people. I wouldn't want to be in a relationship with that town either. Oh, dude, everything that walked by, I wanted to put my face in it, you know? It's an insane scene. I couldn't imagine feeling like I was in a comfortable relationship in that town. Like, you're both walking and be like, wow, that girl's so hot. And she's like, wow, that dude's so hot. And you're just like, huh, okay, I can't wait to go back to Easter with your family next weekend. It's, yeah. yeah I'd fuck everybody. Oh, dude, it's just like you just want to fucking, you know... It's crazy in the fashion out there. You just want a damn pink eye collection, you know? Like, you're yeah. fucking willing and to... And you get it the organic way, oh, too. Yeah, you're willing to do not what even, you need to do. Yeah, not a fart on the pillow, just fart on these goddamn eyelids. Oh, damn. Yeah, I put else? these things to sleep, honey. Yeah, it's but just no, a hot town. So we heard two homeless dude. Wait, we yeah. thought it was a homeless dude and a regular dude fighting. So Which we go over... not and fair. We, right. For the... We Regular dude, he'll get his ass beat. Well, we didn't know what was happening, so yeah. we cruise over, and then one of them, they're beating each other with uh, toilet tissue with a bunch <laughs> of packet of, packet of shit tickets, right? <laughs> so one of them's banging the other dude up with this with like an eight pack of shit tickets, dude. And we're like, oh, dude, hey, what's going on here, guys? Yeah. And it was a black guy and a white guy, and we're like, what's going on here, guys? Who was what? Uh, I can't remember who. 
And then at that point, we realize, oh, both of these guys are home, are like kind of crackheads or whatever. Yeah, oh yeah. You know, like, or they were drug induced. Were they having right? fun though? That kind of sounds fun. No. Like, it sounds like a street pillow fight. It did a little, but then they apologized. They're like, we're so sorry. They kept cursing at each other yeah, yeah, yeah. and kept hitting expensive. each other with uh, with toilet tissue. Damn. And, but it was weird because we went from thinking like, all right, let's step in here and see if we can help out or what's going to go on to, oh, yeah. oh, fuck, both these guys are fucking yeah. like mentally unwell. Like, Do you see the fight at Disneyland last week? Yeah, a couple whites, huh? Yeah, I, I love a good uh, public fight. It's so funny. Well, I always thought that this was a black thing until white people, so this is basically cultural appropriation now. White people fighting? Well, fighting white people at fighting at Disney World because black, well, what, they, well, go ahead. they'd had one group of black people that had done it pretty well a while back. Remember that, Zach? Yeah. And they do it at like places that like matter, like Space Mountain, like fun places to watch a fight. Yeah. But well, well what's worse, like uh, proposing at Here Disneyland, be like, "Will you marry me?" or fighting at Disneyland? I think proposing at Disneyland is worse. Fighting is like that's free entertainment. Oh, I love how they have matching T-shirts. That's hilarious. This was over like where to take a picture. By the way, is people fighting? This is right as you walk in. Uh. Uh-uh. They all have matching T-shirts. Wow. That's the best ride there. No ride will be that trying much to get out of there. No, that's true. Oh, this is Mace Mountain, dude. This is a bunch of thick <laughs> whites fucking spraying each other with that no sight sauce. How many of these people are fucking going down? Dog. Yeah, dude, that's fucking. Yeah, uh, I don't know. What started that? Was it over a photo? There, oh, over a photo. That's literally what it says. Good job, driver, for reading. There's uh, something nice about being in a group fight like that where there's a lot of like energy in one space. Look at that chick rolling in. Yeah. Dude on the bottom has to just move states. That guy is getting his ass <laughs> whooped. <laughs> Imagine that's your dad. Uh, that's crazy. Oh, See, yeah. this is what I don't understand. At this point, at some point, do we ever cut off the gene pool? Like, do we say, hey... We're not going to let their, like at a certain point, the genes have had enough time to be in the zeitgeist of humanity, right? Okay. Uh, like the DNA, we've yeah, seen oh, right, what right, it can right, do right. here, what it can do there. Like we're getting an idea. At yeah. a certain point, do we ever say, hey, you guys can't do any more dna and The whites? I know. Any, any groups of people or... Like at a certain point, do you lose your DNA privileges? Maybe based on your own, oh, well, you, you not should success, be. but your own. There has to, there should be some level where you lose your DNA privileges. I uh, okay, yeah, like like if you keep like a three strike type of thing, something so like a fight like that, you're done. I think you get a strike for sure. Yeah, uh, and if you get your ass beat, it's two strikes. The, okay. The guy on the bottom down there, I mean, he is protesting Disney from day one. I mean, that, that's crazy. Do you stay at the park after you get your ass beat? Well, you're probably arrested. I think you probably stay. Well, they didn't know that the video was out. Who knows if they even got arrested. If you, they, they have a jail at Disneyland. Oh, they do? Yeah. Oh. I haven't been, but. That'd be crazy. Imagine dropping the soap there. Crazy. Yeah. Just give a quick little hoo-hoo. No. <laughs> Oh boy! <laughs> Somebody's yeah, no, getting they... goofy in that ass. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, dude. I'm trying to think. If you had to make love to one cartoon, who would it be, bro? Uh, the girl from Futurama, Lola. She had three tits and one eye. That's a great combo right there. Let's bring her up. I think I think it was three, three tits and one eye. I wasn't really looking past the. Oh, she only had two tits. Yeah, it was only two. No, Ooh, she eye. had three. Bro, you're thinking of Total Recall. Yeah. I'm thinking of a good night. She just kind of does something. It's like the purple hair. Mm-hmm. Like she, she would be a bartender at a place in Hollywood and wouldn't look at you. And that's hard to do with yeah. that eye. But she would like, she wouldn't look, you know? Well, having, oh yeah, I see what you're saying. But also I'm going to say this, having one eye, there would be something so nice if somebody had one eye. You ever really try to look at somebody in the eyes? Just one? I'm doing it right now. Like, but in both eyes, it's almost impossible because you can't. You don't know where to. Yeah, you're, there's always a little bit of... Somebody told me a trick for like interviews. Mm-hmm. You stare in the middle of the, the nose, like the like right in between the eyes, because it looks, you can't really tell. But also, I think one eye is kind of seductive, because like imagine you do like one of these sort of cheek, and she like blushes, and like mm-hmm. the one eye goes down. That's pretty hot. But that the one eye is bigger, and imagine if she, if she starts oh, crying and one true. big tear comes out. Oh, wow. I mean, that could break an iPhone. <laughs> yeah, it would you be. You got to get a bowl of rice and everything. <laughs> yeah. Who is your cartoon you'd go for? Let me think. The cartoon that's oh Jessica Rabbit, huh? Jessica Rabbit does it. Yeah, she does it for a lot of people. God, yeah, boy, I just wanted to draw my own dick on her. 
I remember when I saw that. Oh, what about uh, Lola? I thought she was a real woman. I was like, Mom, we have to go meet her. Oh, do you know how many uh, wish lists she was like, on for Christmas? beat you in the yard if you don't calm down. <laughs> Is that what happened if you got too horned up? Your mom would just beat you in the yard? Oh, dude, my mom, if we were lucky, she'd get a can. She'd get uh, some canned beer and go sit in the yard for a while. God, sometimes it, I wish somebody would beat my ass when I get too horny. It's sunbaby. Like, if I just start, like, swiping on dating apps, I wish somebody would just punch me in the back of the head and be like, go write a new joke. And I'm like, oh, you're right. Yeah, it would be good, huh? You think about that? Well, horniness slows down. S- s- takes up so much of your time. Look it at does. that. How much horniness does... Uh... Dude, my therapist literally told me the other day that I should try jerking off to get these thoughts out of my head. And I was like, where the fuck did you get your degree at? Arizona State University? <laughs> what? Dude. Because I was like, tell, I was like, I feel like sometimes I like, I'm going on dates. I don't know if I just like the attention. Do I, do I, do I like, I don't want to waste anybody's time, but like, mm-hmm. do I like these people or is it just the attention? And he's like, well, before you like start texting people back, like just jerk off. And it was like such a simple, it's, it's the only time he's ever given me an answer. Usually he has questions. He'll be like, well, how does it make you feel? Why does it make you feel? But this is the only time he's like, just touch yourself. And I was like, damn, bro. And I did. And it works for about, 38 minutes. Wow, really? Creeps back in. So you got that half-life. So you, so you're, you come right back around pretty quick. When, uh, you, when you make love to a woman, yeah. all right, are you willing or able to make love again the same night? The same night, yeah, but it's got to be like a full like Family Guy episode. Like it's not, like it might, I don't know, cause like here's all I go, I, I can get back up, but the nut ain't replenished, yeah. you know? Yeah. Brother. So I'm like in a car driving downhill, but there's no engine in there. Oh, but yeah, I'm yeah. driving. But nobody's yeah, so home. it's almost like the engine's off, but you're still going down. I'm coasting. Yeah. But there's no there's no rev power. Yeah. And then I got a lie. I'm like, oh, I finished. And then didn't. So I'd be faking it too, ladies. Oh, I remember the first time I ever got did six. This lady. How old were you, by the way? Mm, well, two things happened. One, <laughs> I uh one, I tried to have sex with a girl and I just got close to her and just ejected all over. Damn. And I just churned out, baby. You I were mean, just built up. Oh, God, boy. That's probably for the best. I How- mean, you could hear a fucking wolf howl. That shit was pure, brother. <laughs> that's uncut nut. Oh, that sh- it did. Yeah. That's this- straight from the, the Pacific. Yeah. So how close was she to you? Mm. She was probably four inches away from me in bed. Oh, wow. I could just feel my body getting closer to hers and just closer. And then I just... And I was like, "Are you? Is everything okay? Are you okay?" And I was like, "I didn't know what had happened." Kind of. How'd you get out of it? Uh, I said, "We should get out of here, right?" And then the cops like, are on the way. <laughs> I don't know what I said, dude. But I got so scared and nervous that uh, I made her climb out of the window. Oh instead yeah. Of going back. Anything to take your mind off the fact that you pre came. Yeah, I was like, "You got to get the fuck out of here." She's yeah, like, yeah. "Why?" The dogs are out front. The dogs are barking. Yes, yeah, I was like, "You have to get the fuck out of here." And there was nobody else even at our house, so it was like, "Yeah, yeah. somebody she's they can hear out you. the window." Yeah, that's crazy. So and that was then, a- and then, yeah, so that was the first almost, and then I ended up making love to this girl behind the bowling alley in our town over there. Bowling alley is kind of a seductive place. A lot of like this action right here. These three fingers get a lot of work. Then all of a sudden, you know. <laughs> You know, oh yeah, she's balling a perfect strike on that. We C-O-C-K. were outdoors behind the place. There's actually, if you pull it up on, uh, it's still out there. There's um Tiffany Lanes. It was called. I would love if the first review or like it was like Tiffany Lane where Theo Vaughn got his cock touched. Yeah, is it in there? Oh my god, honestly, somebody did it. I'm here because of Theo Vaughn who lost some of the pressure at the bowling alley so long ago. Mm-hmm. Oh, you, this is real. Yep, Tiffany Lanes bowling alley over there. They gave wow. it five stars too. Temporarily closed. You should reopen it. We should. You remember? Down. Oh, really? It w- dude, that wouldn't be a bad idea to reopen. You should. Uh, you, what would you call it? Hmm? Theo's Nut Hut? Tiffany's Lane. Tiffany's. Ah. Yeah. Tiffany's Slaying. Yeah, I think you should. You remember when uh, Punchline in San Francisco was going to close down and then Chappelle was like, here's a bunch of money to keep it open? You should do that with this place, Tiffany Lane. Um, What was the review on there, Zach? I don't know if we read it. it was a, they said, I'm only here because Theo Vaughn lost something precious. That's so funny that that's you have such I, I've been meaning to tell you this. You have the best fans, honestly. Really? They're great. What the all the shows that I've done with you, they're so f- they're just excited. They're just happy to be there. Oh, thanks, man. And the energy just it's but it feels both because I don't know. It, I, I love doing any of your shows and anytime and last time I did uh, this past week on a bunch of positive comments and yeah. Uh, yeah, th- it's just a great fan base. They just all they're there for not only you but they, each other, I think. Mm. And I think a lot of the clips I see on TikTok are 
a bunch of really funny stuff, but also people will clip like the moments where you're just real. There was one recently we were talking about, you're like, I don't know if I'm doing my to-do list or I don't know whose to-do list I'm doing. And all the comments were like, dude, I fucking sympathize with, I, I feel this. This is like the real Theo. So people respect you on both sides, you know? Cause if I open up to, and be myself, like, not that I'm not, but like, if I really open up and I'm like, this is what makes me sad at life. People but like, man, shut the fuck up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Go make a video about Celsius, you idiot. So for you, it's like, I think people are around, like 360. They love Theo 360. Oh, interesting, man. And and, and look, I, I know people do care about me and, 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 and all that. And I'm just fabricating all that stuff. But I think like, you know, if I, if I post anything that's not like a sketch or stand up, people are like, the fuck is this? Yeah. Go back to making videos of porn stars, idiot. You know? Yeah. But I think people just love you so much for anything and everything you do. Thanks, man. It, it's it's really yeah, cool. Yeah, there's to a see. lot of special fans. Yeah, a lot of special people out there. I notice it too. A lot of nice people come out, will leave nice things, leave nice messages. I have a lot of good interaction with people on socials yeah. and stuff. Just or a lot of people struggling with different things. I think also probably since I'm older than you, like you'll have probably more times like that in the future where you'll Correct. get to spaces in your life. Like, yeah. you know, you're still making sure that people and just like I am, like you just, you know, you want to make sure that people accept you or whatever, you know. Yeah. And but um, it does feel like that a lot. But yeah, I think uh, yeah, yeah I, I feel like that when I did Nelk, I just did a Nelk podcast. How was that? It was good, man. I like being around. Dude, I'm kind of fascinated by 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 their business. It's and, hilarious and what they do, and they keep like like kind of axing people from their fucking pot. Like people kind of disappear and shit. Dude, it's bizarre. It's like everybody in there is like, a, is a boyfriend and girlfriend. And then they're like, we're fucking done with that bitch. And then next week they're like, we're back together. But that he's done with that. Like, it's just an ever changing door. But Kyle's the one that like remains the same. Yeah. And then everyone else kind of rotates around him. But dude, I mean like no podcast is, um, and I would gladly do it. Hit me up. <laughs> but I remember I took like two days off social media. And the first thing I opened was my phone. It was Donald Trump being asked about Ice Spice by Kyle. And I'm like, what? How do we get here? <laughs> yeah. And Donald Trump's like, Ice Spice, what a woman, great hair, <laughs> love the bush. It is, you know, like, I think everything's funny, kind of merged now. It, that's how it felt. It was like a, a U.S. president is doing a podcast. A, alone is a wild topic. But to be doing the Nelk Boys podcast, yeah. where they're doing like, it's like, all right, up next, Donald Trump. But first, Blue Chew, does your dick not work? Yeah. It's just, it, it's what you said. It's worlds combining. And then we're all turning into the WWE. I mean, even the UFC now is merged with the WWE. Yeah. Um, everything is kind of, you know, you have celebrities fighting boxers. Like everything is kind of merging in a weird way. Everything. Yeah. It's like. And you think that's good or bad? I don't know. That's the thing. I don't know what it is. It's hard to get. It's hard for me. I'm, I have a tough time seeing like the, like the like the pot patterns and a tough time seeing like the bigger picture of things. So I'm like, what is kind of going on? Do we feel like things are getting better or more unique? Yeah. Do we feel like we're just becoming like, I don't know. America doesn't really feel like a big thing anymore. Like when I was like, America was like the biggest thing there yeah. was, dude, it was like the biggest company in the world was America. Right. right. It was like, we're, we're the biggest company in the they world. Were the number one on the Dow Jones, baby. Yeah. USA. That was it. But now it feels almost, and maybe it's just because I live in California. It, it, it almost feels like in, and I, what, this isn't a political statement, but it, it doesn't it feel weird to rep America a little bit. Like if you just see somebody wearing like a USA t-shirt, you almost look at them and you, and you, you automatically associate who they are politically and like who they are and like how they eat pussy and like how they shoot guns. Yeah. And like, they eat just, it from the back. <laughs> yeah. You know the like back, they're pulling man. hair like it's a goddamn trucker. <laughs> yeah. But it feels like, but like, there's nothing wrong with. You love where the you American live. Flag. No, there's but, nothing wrong in that at all. Right, because you'd see a guy then uh, with a Brazilian flag, you'd be like, yeah, that guy loves his country. Exactly. But That's then all you'd it see is. a guy with American flag, you'd be like, oh, this guy might be some right wing politico guy. Right. Yeah. But, but that dude could be sucking cock like his fucking, you know, on some Joey Chestnut shit. You know, so you, you don't really know what or where or how or why, but like something about the USA flag, you think you know that person specifically. Well, that's when it starts to feel like that something like there must be the dark artists that kind of run things, whoever they are, or if there is, they, you know, they've definitely started to dissolve the idea of what it means to be American to a lot of people, you know? But yeah. at the same time, it's like you have people expressing all their rights and opinions when they're lucky enough to live in a country where you can express your it's rights and place. opinions. It's a great place. But it's only because they those things have been, like, fought for right. and... Um, 
the government has been kept enough in check. Yeah. And the, you know, thing, it's only because like, cause easily you could be Cuba or you could be, um, what's another place? Europe. Europe. Paris. Where Paris. they don't, or you know what I'm saying? You could be another place where you don't have the freedom. Yeah. 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 Russia, dude. My, my family's very Russian. And it's like, I was, I, I told somebody the other day, I was like, I kind of want to go back to it. They're like, right now? I was like, yeah, what's up? They're like, what do you mean, what's up? <laughs> Have you heard of anything about Russia and Ukraine right now, you dumbass? I'm like, dude, I get all my news from Laffy Taffy's <laughs> and Snapchat. I'm not doing well in the head, brother. I don't know what to tell you. But like, in my, it, but like, I think we take it for granted, fucking USA, you know? But if you see a guy with a Ford F-350 and it's a wrapped USA, you're like... Oh, this guy yeah, really means it. This guy is on a first name basis with a lot of hooters in town. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I definitely think there's like some traditionalism, but there are people who like use the flag now also as like, I'm going to use the flag as my way of showing how um, conservative I am. Or I don't know, but there's also like liber like people that have liberty or, or like, what is the new thing? It's. Libertarian, libertarian, right? Ozempic. Do they use the American flag a lot? I feel like they do. I feel Ozempic. like they. That's hilarious, dude. <laughs> yeah, that's like fucking. Some people would have an Ozempic flag outside of their employee. <laughs> yeah, American dude, flag. and people would be knocking at the door like, "You got it." I heard a girl at a bar maybe a month ago. She goes, "I think I'm going to Mexico next week because Ozempic is eight hundred dollars cheaper." And I was like, "That sense alone." And I was just looking at it, I was like, why do you have to be so goddamn hot? That's like, uh -huh. like if I said that, people were like, you're an idiot. But I heard that and I was like, I can see through the red flags on this. But like going across the border to get diabetic medicine so you can look thinner, mm -hmm. it's, it's a wild time. Yeah. So the same way that we might say like a USA flag might look weird on somebody because it's too patriotic. Dude, they're looking at LA be like, you, you fuckers are addicted to diabetic medicine? Right. Pussies. Yeah. Put it in your zins, dude. Let's fire <laughs> yeah. up. Yeah. It's, yeah, I don't and, know. There's and most of our, our, like, the military that protects our country or keeps things like, you know, will protect us if need be, they are, they have the American flag on their fucking uniform. Yeah. So it's really weird to get people who are, like, against America. Like, how, why have we created a people that are against our own flag? That's the fucking weird thing to me. It is bizarre. It's like being like, I fucking hate Arby's, but then you're doing work at an Arby's. Yeah, but you're wearing a big hat. Yeah. <laughs> You know, like, Where did that come from? Where are they getting off with this giant ass cowboy hat? There's a comedian that used to have that joke. He was like, Oh, do you think Arby's is just a oh uh do you think there's somebody who thinks Arby's is just a place where they sell big hats? Oh, God. That was an old joke somebody had. Look do at you this. Ever, uh, you know what RB stands for? Arby's roast beef. Yeah. R B. That's why it's Arby's. Wow. Isn't that crazy? It is cool. That's some shit that blows my mind more than it should. Oh you yeah. Know? Yeah, that's the kind of shit people don't know who like the seventh president was, but they know that. Right. It's like when you're a child and they do this, got your nose, and you're like, hold the fuck on. Yeah. You better slow down there, brother. What are we doing here? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Give yeah. me that back. <laughs> yeah, when I, I found out Arby's was Arby's like recently. Yeah. I didn't know a pickle and a cucumber were the same thing until I was 22. Oh, yeah. That does blow your mind, doesn't it? Nobody tells you that. Yeah. We're learning about <laughs> Volvos and goddamn sexual ed. Dude, Volvos? remember when Jolly Ranch? Remember when Jolly Ranchers came out? Dude, I was thinking about. Uh, My God, do you fucking remember it, though? <sighs> Might have been past my. Oh. But do you remember? I mean, you you, you got people because a candy had never lasted that long. No, I want to tell you that before that they'd had fucking candies, they'd had mints, and they'd had damn. Uh, they dense. Even when you break it down, it's still tough. Oh God, you, you couldn't, couldn't even break fucking, it down. You had to hire a man to fucking almost chew on it for you a little bit, and then put it back in your mouth. God, you remember when uh, Yogurt Land came out? Not yeah. Yogurt Land, Pink Berry. Yeah, Pink, Pink Berry. Berry had the world by the goddamn sack and a half. And what happened? It, it was tart under. yogurt. And everyone was like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. Our brains couldn't comprehend it. And if it went under? I think they're still out there. But like at are the they? time, yeah, I saw one recently. Yeah, they're out there. They are. But I but at the time, our brains were like, why is this ice cream tart? Yeah. And the world just couldn't comprehend it. It was like Burger King uh, chicken fries. Yeah. And, so goddamn good. And they were paying, and we just had Brianna chicken fry on, actually. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, she's she's great. Yeah, she's uh, she's interesting. I remember in Dallas, a girl. This was like years and years ago, maybe like 2017. She DM me before the show. She goes, "You can pour uh, chocolate sauce in my titties." Mm. And before I was getting off stage, I was like, "Hold up!" Before I get out of here, I remember this DM. Where's the chocolate sauce titty girl? And she was like, "Woo!" And then we hooked up that night. And she had some Franzia bags on her, and I, really? I'm talking aged like fine wine. Great. She DM me like maybe like 
six months ago. I was like thinking about you. I was thinking about them. Damn. God. But something like that, like that's a DM where you're like, I can't not not answer this. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it's cool if you have a chick just kind of lean off the bed and hang one tit off the bed. Man, like it's looking for an iPhone charger. <laughs> yeah. <I'm> like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you think if you were a female, you'd have more ass or more rack? Dude, I think if I were a female, I would just... I uh, probably wouldn't leave the house. I'd probably get nipples put onto my butt cheeks, dude. <laughs> and just go all tits, no ass. All tits, no ass. Yeah. Wow. That would... <sighs> all tits, no ass. You had that just unlimited tits, bro? I kind of like it because it, it's a... Uh, it comes around, you know, like up front, front of parents, people are like, yeah, whatever. That's just Theavana, whatever your name is. And then you walk away and they're like, oh, damn, I've misspoken. You know, because up front, you're just chilling. Then on the back, you got that Hemi. If you saw that bra on somebody's ass, you'd be like, my God, they're doing that well. Bro, it's like a Lamborghini. You got the engine in the back. Yeah. Got the Hemi up on those legs. I love that, man. It's funny. You know, it's cool that people have an ass and tits, man. I Both. Think. What do you got, Zach? What's up in the news of it air for you? We were watching this video. Um, this girl did a, she recreated Kobe Bryant. She's an Asian woman. Um, she changed her face to look like Kobe Bryant, and it's pretty well, crazy. I'm going to need to see it. that. And then, uh, so there's a debate is this blackface or not? You tell me. Mm. Yeah, I mean, immediately, yes. No, you think? I what will say this. This looks like a lot of the portraits that you've seen drawn of Kobe around town. What? I haven't seen really many good portraits of Kobe, which is fucked up given how great he he was. Let's see her one more time. This is like Kobe Bryant. You saw him on like Hollywood Boulevard. She looks like Charlemagne in like 20 years, I feel like. <laughs> Do you think this is considered blackface? Not to me, it's not. It might be considered Laker face. I, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or Western Conference face. I, but I don't think this is black how face. How do you, I mean, dude, this is, I mean, how do you not run this past one person? You're Asian, dude. Some <laughs> Asians don't even talk to each other, dude. Have you been to China, bro? It's 70 billion people not even talking to each other. That's crazy. It's unbelievable. I feel like that's how my brain works. It's like 70 billion thoughts, but nobody's aligned. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nobody's connecting. Nobody's you know running it past each other. What are people saying? Are they into this or not? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, first of all, it has 16 million views, 17 million views. I mean, if that's what you got to do to get those views, I, I get mean, it. People are saying it's blackface. I well, mean, it's here's what I think. I She's going to be on the Nuck Boys podcast tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. At a certain point, black like blackface was... Can you scroll down a little? It was they were doing it because they didn't black people weren't allowed to be actors, so they painted white people as black people. Oh, um, I didn't know that. She's trying to look like Kobe. How else would she do it? Don't. Uh, and then someone said, "I feel like she's just displaying her makeup art talent." Blackface is really a reach here. Yeah, maybe that's what I think. This looks a little artistic. I don't know. It kind of uncomforts me if a kid who really loves a black athlete can't. Be the, I mean, I guess you can just by having the He's jersey. jersey yeah. But like, if they wanted to, like, because a kid, if he has no malice in him and he's not trying to like do anything bad, I don't know. At a certain point, uh, yeah, I think people, if you have the jersey, people still get the gist. Nobody's wearing just a Kobe jersey and they're like, I don't believe you. And then you just pass them a can of paint and you're like, you know what to do. Yeah, mean it. <laughs> But then here's the crazy part. There'll be some black people like, oh, you ain't fucking real, bro, unless you paint yourself up. You know? Yeah. And the next thing you know, the guy's You can't got, win. Yeah, the guys. Yeah, that's the thing. You can't really win because there's always that party that's like, oh, there's always that part of black culture that's like, oh, you ain't real enough, you know? Mm -hmm. Unless you go all the way in. And then there's always a part of the culture that's like, oh, this is too much, bro. You fucking uh, using cultural appropriation. Yeah, I, I think if she wanted, you just go half. She could just do half. Yeah, there you go. You know, that way, like, if somebody's like, that's offensive, she turns like this. And like, what do you mean? And like, ah. But then the crowd that's like, oh, that's not folding. A boom. Yeah. Kind of like a flounder. And she's Asian. If it were a white person, maybe it gets looked at a little bit differently. This person is an Asian person. They don't know what they're doing a She lot doesn't of even times. know Kobe Bryant passed away. Yeah, she probably doesn't. And also, is this Kobe Bryant? Let's look at this fucking it person. It looks more like uh, maybe like Ron Artest after he's been doing a lot of Equinox. Yeah. Yeah, I would say that. It looks more like, uh, I mean, yeah. The more I look at this, this doesn't look anything like Kobe Bryant. Right. This looks but like. Have you ever seen a good Kobe Bryant mural? 
No, they're all a little off, huh? Right. That would piss me off. I, I had shitty memories. Yeah, this looks like right. Yeah, I think you're right on the run. Our test. It even. I don't even know who the, this is like a black like a black guy that would work like in an office or something like a <laughs> FedEx brother. Do you ever seen that guy hooping at a gym and he's wearing all Michael Jordan head to toe? Mm-mm. It kind of looks like him a little bit. There should be a video. He's like hooping at like a twenty four hour fitness. What else we got, Zach? For the news, um, California is about to ban Skittles. Really? Other, can, other candies? Yeah. Oh, this is interesting. Yeah, uh, apparently they're kind of. Toxic. I fucking love so Skittles. Skittles, Pez, hot tamales. Um, this is gonna happen. And many more popular candies. The California Assembly last week overwhelmingly passed Assembly Bill 418, sending the legislation over to state senate. Um, as long as they don't ban TikTok, I don't really give a fuck what they ban. Skittles is just funny. It's like we have vape flavored Skittles, hot tamales too, though. Skittles flavored vapes. You know. Well, I guess they have link. They're linked to cancer. That's a big thing. Skittles. Skittles Skittles, I mean, allegedly, that's why this is all kind of Is this our generations putting Coke and Coke back in the day? Mm. You know? Like, was there cancer in the Skittles and they knew it or whatever? Yeah, Yeah. what if? I mean, I think I'm, like, this is just, some things just change over time, you know? If the chemicals are bad, then they're bad. Who knows? What's Skittles' slogan? Taste the rainbow. Oh, well, mm. we should get rid of that first before we do anything. Yeah, especially on the uh, on the heels of all the remember all the Bud Light stuff, <laughs> which has been so crazy for them. Hasn't Aren't they it? doing like a, a camo can to like combat it? Yeah. yeah, I think they just do both. It's camo rainbow, a Ooh. rainbow camo, and just they fuck the. Free, it would look like a four loco, honestly. Yeah, I miss a good four loco. It's crazy how many. But then also the craziest thing about the Bud Light thing is all they did was send that girl some beers, right, or that guy. Dylan I, I don't even know what happened. They send him some beers. You know, like sometimes like brands will send you stuff and they'll put your name on it or try to make it personalized to you so yeah. that you'll share it or make it a yeah, social yeah. thing. That's what they did. That's all they did. Yeah. But Mulvaney took it and said, oh, they made me a spot. Like Mulvaney's the one who blew it up. All they did was send a little gift thing. What did the I don't can? Think they paid Mulvaney or not. What did the can look like? Or that was the one? That's it right there. Oh, wait. wait. But, I, I uh, didn't even know what the can looked like. For some reason, I thought it would, uh, would it, huh. Yeah, that's it. They just put her picture on a can. So she then blows it up, and then people, you know. Now it's just so much bigger than what the, like, it, the, the joke is so much bigger than what it actually was. The only person it really behooved was um, Herm. Yeah, and I mean, Dylan probably made a lot of money off this, and well, just got a, lot a lot of, of hype attention. and exposure. Oh, of course. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I believe that he's a gay male that's looking for clout but i don't know if that definitely it's just something that i believe and i could be wrong what do you think zach um yeah i don't know i mean uh the thing is people people thought that this was being distributed nationwide and no like, it wasn't and it wasn't so it's it kind a of a perfect off. example of like misinformation like people yeah. didn't take any time to like read into it further it's just the joke was so much bigger than the actual story that now like anytime you see somebody drinking a bud light you're like oh better keep my pants on or yeah. if i'm down for you know like the, it's I almost was, fun now too. You could buy somebody a Bud Light if it's getting late and you think they're gay. Yeah, I mean it, now it, now it's like it's past the point of the like controversy. But now it's just like funny at Bud Light. It has nothing to do with Dylan. It's more just like like it's funny. Like send a a group of dudes on a bachelor party or a Buffalo Wild Wings. But hey, can we send around a Bud Lights? And then they get in. They're like, oh, what? Guess we got to suck each other off now. <laughs> <laughs> you start going after. Yeah. Like it's funnier now than the actual. The, the controversy, I think. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. It's almost just funny now. It's like a funny thing. It's exactly it's crazy how quickly something goes from being like real serious to funny now. It's like it used to be that right. that probably would have taken two years. Well, now it's just the na- the name Bud Light is a joke in the same way that the name like Kyle or like Chad or some of these big or Karen, these big meme names yeah. are just forever impl- implanted that. Like, like, so now you'll never think of a Bud Light again the same. Yeah. And we'll be 93 in our chairs with dementia. be like, fucking Bud Light. And yeah. just talking to a brick wall, you know? Yeah, Benjamin's gay. You know, we're just running our laps in our head of thoughts. What else we got, Zach? What else is going on? I can tell you this. Last night, I was uh, at a fireplace and a moth landed on the corner. Mm-hmm. And then he just flew directly into the fire. Oh. <laughs> I was like, you are looking for the wrong light, brother. He's... His time was done. I saw him land. I was like, damn, he's awfully close to the fire. He contemplated it maybe like four seconds and then just beelined right into the flames. Wow. It's kind of kind of sad, but honestly, I respect it. 
Yeah, well, it's a, I mean, I think it's a lot of people how like addiction happens. It's like you want oh, wow. something, you feel it makes you feel warm. It's a good light, and you're like, I'm going all Dude, the way I didn't in. Even think about that. He's like, I'm fucking done with light bulbs. Give me the brightest, yeah. hottest shit you can find. I want all the smoke. Yeah. Oh, God. I kind of respect him a little bit. I might oh, get him yeah. tattooed on my bicep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mothy. Um, dude, I saw one time I was in church and a woman, um, a butterfly came and landed on her face at church. Really? And she said, oh, that's my son. He visits me every year. He died this time like seven years ago. Wow. So uh, it was at this crystal cathedral in Orange, California. And the doors of the church open, like the whole wall opens so that... Um, Butterfly, so that like uh, you can just the organ is like right there, and it's just beautiful. It's always wow. nice. That's, that's and this awesome. butterfly came all the way in and landed right on her cheek. And she that's what she said that's my son. He died in a motorcycle accident, and uh, he comes and visits me. Well, I would start tearing up on spot. It was crazy, man. I got some pictures with her. I got a good look and see if I have oh, those really? pictures. Yeah, Damn. Got some pictures like this, and she just got the butterfly. Did on the her butterfly cheek. ever come to you at all, or no? It kind of it it stayed on her face for probably about fifteen minutes. Wow. And then it left. Which That'd be is cool crazy. if you and the butterfly became boys. Just left right out the same way it came in. Yeah, could be interesting. Yeah, videos like that would make me tear up. Also, uh, yeah, when's the last time you teared up? You think? Oh man, probably recently. Yeah, you know, just a lot of stuff in my personal life, and just kind of just figure. I'm just trying to figure out like what and who I am. I guess I like I know very much career wise, but I think internally, you know, like I'm 30 and I'm like I don't have a family. I don't really know what's going on, and it's like I, sure I can drown my life out with work and. You know, I can always be like, add more tour dates, make more videos, edit this. But it's like, it's those moments where I'm sitting still. I'm like, what, what am I doing this for? Who, who do I want to share this with? You know? Damn. I don't know. Yeah, not to get deep, but it, but I, no, um, it's important. probably like that. Or, or if I see a video of like, uh, you know, somebody coming home from the war and surprising oh, their yeah. son at a baseball field, that'll coming get me home, dude, coming home every time that, oh. or it's like the, the Wiz Khalifa song. See you again. Those always make me cry. Those are cr those man, or the, like the dad walks into the baseball or uh, to the classroom. Oh, I watch those anytime I need to adjust my feelings. Dude, those are the videos that I go to. Those always make me feel, just feel. I just feel right there. You yeah. know, those are great. You know, what videos I love watching for the opposite reasons is stolen valor videos. You ever seen those in the mm -hmm. airport? When the guy's like filming, he's like, oh, you served too? Nice. Where, where'd you serve at? And the guy's like, uh, St. Petersburg. And the guy's like, really? Because if you did, it'd be on your left shoulder. It starts going at him. And then he's like, Stolen Valor. <laughs> the guy just trying to get a free Cinnabon at the airport. I fucking, God, it's so, it's such a loser thing to do. Oh, it's the, when people do Stolen Valor, they should make them have to do a week of boot camp. Oh, that's like, that's their punishment. Dude, this, the, the videos are just so funny because it's like, what are you trying to do it for? They always look like the guy at the top left. Yeah. It's always at a restaurant too. Restaurant or the airport? Because they're trying to get like a free meal or something. Oh yeah, that's what they're using it for. Yeah, that or like respect or so they can like board the plane first. That's just too many hacks, man. If you're hacking the world this much, you gotta shut it down, bro. Yeah, it's just I don't know, man. It's there's better ways to do it. Like don't wear like like I would just wear a t shirt that says like organ donor. Somebody will help you out. Yeah, that's a good point. And that's not stolen valor. If you aren't, maybe it is. The craziest stolen valor is when you see somebody wearing like a uh, Travis Kelsey jersey, and they're not. It's like and they're not Travis Kelsey. Not a chance, bro. <laughs> yeah, but the videos are always so funny because they you can tell they did their research up to a certain point. But they're not even as healthy as Randy Travis. Yeah, right. Bring up Randy Travis. Yeah, I just it's they're so funny to me. And God bless Randy Travis. He's an amazing singer. Um, he has a disability. What is it called? He's got something. Men, uh, oh, I didn't know that. Lou, uh, what's he got? Lou, Di um, Lou Gehrig's? Maybe Lou Gehrig's, yeah. Or somebody Gehrig's. What's he got? He had a stroke. Oh, he had a stroke. Yeah. Damn. My bad. But he's got, yeah. Yeah, but if you see somebody in a rant, yeah, in a Travis Kelsey jersey, and they're not even... Travis Kelsey. They're not, yeah, and they're not even Randy Travis. They're not even like, you know. They're not even Travis Pastrana. Yeah. And he's deceased, didn't he? No, no, he, he, he's, he's, he's alive. Yeah, he's he's very yeah, alive. Yeah, so, uh, so anyway, that kind of stuff to me is some real stolen valor. What makes you laugh or what makes you cry? Well, let's do both sides. Well, I mean, what you're saying, I think about like not knowing like what's going, like what am I doing this for? Fuck, dude, that shit can... I find my emotions get really high like that. And then I kind of calm myself down. I'm like, it doesn't matter what, if I don't know the answers today, that's fine. And then I can like walk myself through, but it starts off high. Then I like walk myself through it. Yeah. 
And then I saw that moth go straight into that fire. I was thinking about this last night, actually. And I saw the moth go right into the fire. And I was like, damn. Maybe that's, I don't know. Everybody has their own journey. Whoa, whoa, that, brother. That, that moth was not feeling it. But yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think that's, I, I usually feel that and then I can walk myself through it. And I go, yeah. that's fine. Well, it can keep going. Today. That's the thing. If you don't get an idea of what you want to do, then whatever you're doing will just continue. Yeah. I noticed that for myself. It's like I work all the time. I mean, last night I'm messaging Zach at freaking midnight about something. Yeah. You know? It just can't shut the brain off. I'm the same way. And I'm so, so thankful that I knew what I wanted to do at a young age. Like I, the fact that I'm more lost in life than I am with career. Mm. You know? It's a blessing because the other ways it can can be just, it's just a different way, but yeah, it's Yeah, I mean, it's the like grass is always green or it's like you have the right. perfect family relationship, but you're fucking, you know, you work at H&R Block and you're like, I want it to be a balloon animal artist. Yeah. And now you're in the bathroom blowing up goddamn Trojans, making snakes. <laughs> oh, yeah, drug mule and dude. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. I, I, I don't think I ever have to know what's really going on. You just take it day by day. Oh, yeah, dude. I think sometimes, bro. Uh, but I notice if you don't have an idea or get an idea at some point, you'll just continue. Like I yeah. just continue to work. My life continues to be kind of the same cycle. Some of it is because like of uh, like just being late to figuring out what's going on with myself. You know, whereas now as I do start to look a, bit, a little bit more like I want a family or I'm alone by myself. And it's like, man, after a while, this gets boring. Right. You know, or uh, you want to have somebody to share like a nice time with, you know. But then you have a family and you go to Disneyland and all of a sudden some dude's swinging on you. Yeah. And then you're like, God, I wish I was fucking <laughs> single. So there's no, you know. There's no perfect way. There isn't. And that's what I think you find out just through time. Mm. You just find out what you like and what you don't like. And you try to tend to what you like as much as you can. Yeah. Do you think you would ever leave your wife and children? Definitely. Respect. Would you ever leave your wife and kids? I believe that if I don't want to, well, I'm gonna say that right now. I do not want to leave you guys, wherever they are. Yeah, and I, dude, I used to write postcards to my kids like that. I like years ago, I'd write postcards, kids. even though I didn't even have them. Where would you send them? Just to my own address and like <laughs> save them for my kids for when I get older or whatever. That's crazy, right? Did you have their names already picked out or it'd be like insert name? I can't remember if I put their names first. I think I just put Dear name here. Yeah. Uh Von, little Vaughn, something, you know. Yeah, Lil Vaughn, Gertrude. Yeah. yeah, I can't remember. Or unborn or something like fucking weird. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But because I, I think part of me always wanted probably to have children, but I, I could never see any way how I was gonna get there from where I was where I was at. Well, what happens with me, I was with a, a couple recently and they've been together for five years and they got a kid on the way. And hearing them talk made me realize how far away I am mm. from where they are in life. You know, they're like, oh, we're getting married next year. We just had a kid. And like the way they would talk, like she would start talking and then he'd be like, do, do you want, should I finish the story? Cause you're telling me wrong. I'll, I'll finish the story. Then they're like going back. They're like arguing with each other. Then they bring it to you. And like, I was so disconnected to where those two were at in life yeah. of a family. And like, it, you know, if a family was like a, like a pie chart, like they had so much more pie than me. Like I had just a little sliver. Yeah. You were more a la mode. Huh? Yeah. I was on the side. I was a little, I was a little raspberry on the side just <laughs> yeah. hanging out. Well, I think, but also for some people, there's different paths, you know, True. and it's hard to battle with whatever your path has been, you know, it's like, I felt like when I was a kid, like I just didn't have like a lot of affection and stuff at home. But then as an adult, like you're saying, I got a lot more like affection just from strangers, you know? So it's almost mm. like you just never really know what the path for life is going to be. That's for true. You. you know, you might like Robert Downey Johnson or whatever, just had a kid at 79 years old, right? De Niro. Robert De Niro. Did he really? Yeah. Or he ain't backed up down there. He ain't got uh -huh, that I know he just had a kid, man. Snip. Wow. Yeah, Robert. Well, well, how old? Your dad was old. My dad was seventy. Yeah. So you were doing. So he was following the footsteps of your father. Yeah, I mean, my dad. I mean, and this is nine years later. That's crazy. I remember my dad would tell me stories about kids in his village like eating dirt because they were starving. That's yeah. how you know he's old. The village is crazy. Um, there he is, he, right there. Uh, he's still pumping. Is that his wife? And he's hammering on that mixed yam, homie. Yeah, look at that's his lady. Oh yeah. Gang, maybe damn. I feel like after he busts one, he does like he like hops on, like on his glasses and, goes, <sighs> and like polishes on like a silk t shirt. Yeah, what's the oh, that's good. What's the best post uh ejaculate uh move? Uh, I would say finger pistols or a gainer flip into a hot tub. <laughs> 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 the flip where you run back with it. What is that? It's a forward facing backflip. Wow, that's crazy. If you bro. come and then just do a gainer flip into a body of water. 
you get knocked up and that son is addicted to vape early. <laughs> oh, dude. Here's a crazy thing. These days, somebody who can do a forward backflip, like you're saying, is looked at more prestigiously than somebody who's serving in the military. Oh, dude. I mean, if I see you do that, yeah. I, you're in my will. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you definitely. earn part of what I earn forever. You're more important than my agent and manager. Bro, it's so crazy how one little thing that somebody can do. Yeah, what's the craziest thing? I think, uh, oh, one thing that's crazy is if you say I'm going to the restroom, you go hide in their apartment. <laughs> Just anywhere? Yeah. Just in the pantry, eating the biscos. Well, you hide and they have to come look for you like, oh, it's hiding. Oh, that's like, this funny. person is a fucking psycho. I'm definitely taking plan B after this person. Yeah, and then you forgot it's your apartment and they just leave and oh, just yeah. end there for seven hours. Yeah. What do you think? What do you think a girl would get the most turned on? Like, what move do you think you could do that would like, she'd be like, oh my God, Theo's so much more attractive than I thought. Like, what's a move besides hiding? I don't know. I don't have a lot of strong moves. I think Reset I like the Wi Fi. Maybe kissing on the neck a little bit, I like. Yeah. Uh, on you or you to her? Me to her. I like kissing on a woman's neck, probably. Yeah, Unless she got too much um, perfume on there. Oh, yeah. God dang. Some ladies put that shit on, bro. Right. Your tongue goes numb. You got fentanyl on your neck? <laughs> I know. Damn, bro. Some lady, that shit is too much, bro. It's a little heavy. But I so. like it. The next day, if like the pillow kind of smells like her, mm -hmm. that's some shit where oh, I'm that's like, nice. that, that's like, wife. That's yeah, wife right. and stuff. The, the, that's how like the, like I uh, I met up with uh, my ex a couple months after we had broken up, mm. and that scent was the same scent, mm. and it brought back so many memories. It just like yeah. it's just it's just associated, you know. Yeah, we had a chick at our school that used to go to school and she put that orange bathroom cleaner, you know, that smell that's in all the bathrooms. Fabulosa? Uh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just very generic orange bathroom cleaner. I think Can it was called that, that too. Generic orange bathroom cleaner. Yeah, something just like that. <laughs> yeah, like a by government. Nabisco, yeah. Yeah, it was a government scent. And she <laughs> she put that shit on. Oh, Ajax? And I would smell it. No, no, this is way too commercialized, a lot of that. Uh. And she yeah. would put it on? Yeah. Wow. Maybe that was it up one. Smelling like vitamin Up C one, and to D. the left, something like that. Eco orange, yeah, yeah. She put that fucking eco orange on at school. I like the scent of the the pink soap they got in the schools. That stuff's good. That stuff was nice. It, it tastes like a like a like like Robitussin. Oh, you're not taste. supposed. Oh, you're not supposed to taste it. Hmm. But I used to huff a lot of things as a child. God, yeah. There you go, right there. Get that the one. You, yeah, yeah. That's the stuff we're looking at. Yeah, that, but like the scent to that it reminds me of the dentist office, but like in a good way. Advantage Chemicals, it was called. <laughs> dude, they did not put any fucking work into that name. Like it's a contest, dude. Advantage Chemicals, you just knew you were gonna dude, lose. That's at a crime scene. You pour that over a dead body, and the body just disintegrates. <laughs> oh, that's that Dexter sauce, homie. That's yeah. all that is. What other news we got? There's a ton of stories on there. Can I go pee real quick? Yeah, let's go piss, man. Take a break. What else? You've been dating her? What have you been doing? Because last time we saw each other, we went to Young Gravy's, remember? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I saw you with Young Gravy. I was uh, seeing it late at that point. Um, yeah, I'm kind of just trying to figure things out right now. I'm, I'm really just uh, I'm filming a special in July, so I'm really just trying to focus on everything just comedy related right now. Just, But uh, it's hard because, you know, you, 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 like you said, you're like, man, I like going on dates. It's fun. It's like it's fun kind of building up you know, chemistry with people, seeing if it's working or not and whatnot. But um sometimes yeah you just like you have a show and like you meet a really cool chick and you're like all right let's feel this out like sometimes you don't even want to date but somebody gets brought into your life and you're like mm. oh let me explore let me see what's going on here um do you have a process for not wasting your time and their time a little bit uh i think i'm getting mm, i don't know i like do you do a call first usually oh, do you do anything like that or you just kind of <laughs> um no i wish do you i know some people like facetime before but that's so weird it feels Person. weird, but if it saves everybody the time, that's true. I don't know if I have a plan. I should have a better plan. I need to start to have a plan. I think if I want to get a wife and family, like yeah. not that okay. I, I can choose what's going to happen because you right. don't know what's going to happen. Right. But I think I should have at least like some uh, a little bit of a like a pattern I'd like to follow to help myself. Yeah, I kind of feel it out. Just like you can kind of feel it like through texting, like what type of person that is, but. Like some people we talk to, they're they got it all mapped out. I don't have it like that. They're like, first date, you go to drinks. It's an easy in, it's an easy out. Second date, park, free, cheap, get out, third date, then you have food. It's like it's all mapped out. I kind of just feel it out. Yeah. Like I'll take a girl to a steakhouse four minutes in, and I'll be like, We don't need to be here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, or she'll say something, she's like, Oh, we could have just watched the sunset. You're like, that shit's yeah. free. 
You're like, steak, miss steak. Huh? God damn, I'm send not. this back. It's medium rare. <laughs> send me back. Uh, I don't really have a process. I don't know. I don't really know what's going on in life a lot of the times, really. Um, yeah, I think it's, well, it's just interesting, especially these days, I think we're all so like on social media. We're all on, like we're constantly being entertained by stuff, right? Correct. There's so much entertainment. Like you can turn on your phone at any point. You can see like an amazing goal being scored. Someone yeah. uh, battling something severe in their life. Somebody uh, doing a GoFundMe. Somebody lost their arms, legs, Everything. and head. I saw the other day. Some guy lost his arms, legs, and head. You can also watch a man getting head. In a thing. Yeah. And you can do GoFundMe for both. It's crazy how much stimulation your brain is throwing at you all at once. It's the best of everything. Right. All in a few minutes. But then you shut it off and you come back to whatever your regular life is. And right. usually I think in that time when your brain would have been kind of processing what's going on in your own life. Because yeah. your brain's kind of a processor, right? It wants to organize things. Of course. Your brain wants to organize things. Like that's its like modus operandi. Like that's its what it does. It like notices patterns. It organizes things. So you have the best most comfortable way to live and survive, right? That's like what his whole job is. Yeah. So I think usually when we're relaxing or resting or giving our brain time to kind of process and we're not just constantly entertained. I think that's what it is. Then we are able to have more things figured out. Whereas yeah. I think now when we're just doing constant entertainment, you, you, you're not getting as much figured out like in the background. You're never as giving you're your to be. your brain a chance to openly think. That's why yeah, to return like, the books. It's yeah, like you exactly. know at the library you see all the stacks yep. of books that were returned. Yep. And you're like, damn, this my, the book I really like could be in there, but I don't even know. Yeah. We're not giving our brain a chance to return new books. We're just fucking opening up millions of fucking books. There's not anything on the shelf anymore. Exactly. Just tons of yeah. books. You're just and throwing just, books at the shelf and they <laughs> fall right off. Yeah, yeah. Dewey Decimal is shooting up in the fucking <laughs> in the corner like long division hasn't been talked to in a long time <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. that boy turned an academy in asap <laughs> down by the hudson but that's yeah. really kind of a neat analogy i didn't think about that before but that's kind of what it's like it is because all those thoughts are in your brain but you you're just you're distracting it with social yeah. media and i mean it's it, it is wild and that's why like people fucking lose their mind you know on a plane before you can't take off and there's no like there's no like Wi-Fi yet, or you can't open up your laptop. The dark eleven, they call it that dark eleven. Oh, minutes. do they? Yeah, yeah. But that's who you are in that eleven minutes is who you really are. Yeah. Who you are when your phone is dead, that's who you really are. When you're just sitting there at an IHOP with a dead phone and you got to make eye contact with the lady with one eye, yeah. I'll take the flapjack. And what the <laughs> fuck happened there? <laughs> but like those moments, it's like I did that last night when I was sitting by the fireplace. I I didn't have my phone and I just wanted to just I just wanted to. I've been traveling so much. I, I kind of like lost my own narrative a little bit. And I just was like, what, what, what is important right now? What do I want to focus on? And I just stared into the fire and it's just like, all, I had every thought that I've been neglecting. Mm. It, it felt nice. It, it's kind of like when people do mushrooms, it's like they, th those thoughts get brought to the surface. Yeah. I'm trying to think of one of my favorite times on mushrooms ever. Um, I like being on a bird scooter, a little buzzed. Oh. And I know that's illegal, but it feels fucking is it illegal? I feel like they only work if you have a buzz. <laughs> right. Dude, I remember when we were uh, children, they had, we did some uh, LSD or mushrooms, right? Or um, one of the two. Or uh, LSD. And yep. we went to the Waffle House and it was the first time we'd seen a gay dude, right? Or alleged gay or whatever. At Waffle House? Yeah. Or just and, in general? Uh, I can't remember. But it was the first time we'd seen a gay dude like this close to like a kitchen, yeah. right? And it was, uh, they had, um, or it, it was like the first time we'd seen like a gay dude with like a menu, you know? Okay. So, uh, my buddy started just laughing so hard. We were just on drug, right? We were laughing right. so hard. The guy thought that he was choking, right? Because of how he was laughing. Like he was like laughing so much. He was like almost spitting up. Yeah. So he starts doing the Heimlich maneuver on, on right? Buddy? A dude that we had just thought was gay. <laughs> so, now, like, <laughs> so now the whole restaurant is like, what's going on here? Dude. Let's not say restaurant. Okay. <laughs> this is where like but this is normal Waffle House behavior. This nor this is where people and in our town, like they had a long bridge near our town. It was the longest bridge in the world for a while, and it dropped off. One end of it was by our town. Nice. And the um so the police, everybody they caught on that bridge drunk uh drive and they would drop off at this Waffle House. So it was like a fucking That was your drunk tank, was a Waffle House? Yeah. I mean, if I was drunk, I would definitely stay. So it was like a booze. That's actually smart. Yeah. It was a booze zoo for fucking just 
just derelicts, you know? Too so anyway, this, but this alleged gay dude is just fucking high. Like my buddy who's not choking. He already coughed up and he's still going. <laughs> yeah, he's oh, no, he's good. He's good. They just turn out and make it out. And I'm like, is this dude really an EMT or is this dude just having like kind of like a fit of gay or whatever, you know? But he was pumping on my homie yeah, pretty good. Waffle House, you walk in there sober, but you sit in that chair long enough, you feel a little bit. You don't know what drug it is. Yeah. If it's an upper or a downer, just life. But you feel that. Oh, it's that fucking margarine buzz, homie. I fucking love Waffle House. There was a, a donut shop in my hometown mm -hmm. where uh, if you used to flash them your tits, you get free donuts. They never did it for me, but they did have... God, I love that. But, like, and I was always wondering, like, like, do they do a by mm -hmm. size? Like, what if you showed your tits and, like, all right, here's a donut hole? I'd be like, damn. I got mm -hmm. fake tits for no reason. But, yeah, like, if you had some knockers, they'd be like, here's a bear claw. It's kind of crazy. Oh, That was God, the original yeah. girl who's gone wild. God, I'd show my... Uh, God, I don't know what show I would do some. for a bear claw when I was a kid. So good. In our neighborhood, if you had respect for something, you'd take your shirt off. Yeah, what is that? It's just like a thing. It's almost very native. I think you would. Alpha? Yeah, or no, not alpha. Just like you wanted them to, like it was a sign of respect. Like a you standing know? ovation, but for your body? Yeah, because I think back in the day, we didn't have clothes on all the time. That's true. Who invented clothes? Can you look it up? <laughs> Some fucking idiot, probably. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You want to see less tit? Unless it was like a parent, then I get it, but like. Yeah. The Neanderthals. Oh, Ronnie Pants did it, huh? Yeah. The, the first known humans to make clothing, Neanderthal man survived from about 200,000 BC to about 30,000. Wow, 170,000 years. Did they do it because they were cold or they were just too horny? During this time. <laughs> Maybe tried celibacy and he's like, bro, you got to cover those nips up or something. <laughs> During this time, the Earth's temperature rose and fell dramatically, creating a series of ice ages throughout the northern areas. Um, when was the first clothing made? Can you go down to that? Who was the first brand? It was 200,000 BCE. That's what they said. Okay. And what was it? Can we look and see what it yeah, was? it got to be like a leaf. The first clothes were made from natural elements, animal skin and furs, grasses and leaves, and bones and shells. Um, it was often draped or tied. However, simple needles made out of animal bone provided evidence of sewn leather and fur garments from at least 30,000 years ago. Oh, wow. Huh. Did they even have... Yeah, they, I'm trying to think if you could stunt back then. You think you could? 100%. I think so. I How mean, do you roll up? When do you roll up? Not in the middle of the day. It's hot as hell, right? Because somebody's in a cave. Like, you have yeah. to... What, like, when when he flex in it? Probably if I was, you know what I would do? I would, I would, I would I'm going to go get some water, right? Go to the, the well, mm -hmm. no clothes. And I'd come back with the water and the clothes. And they'd be like, oh my God. I'd be like, oh yeah. Oh, oh this? Oh, the water or the outfit? You know, like a little like subtle, like, yeah. oh, which one? Yeah. Which one's dripping, you know? <laughs> yeah. Which one got that water shoddy? Who, who wet now? The town caveman? <laughs> I don't know. When would you do it? I don't, that's a good question, bro. I think if you roll in around dinner with a special deal, like a little dessert or a little, yeah, for you dessert. Know, yeah, fruit or something, you bring a yeah. fucking apple they never seen, dude, <laughs> everybody's smashing, bro. And dude, back in the day, there was no way to let people know you were happy except to probably jerk off. You think? Oh, I'm sure what if you brought- stick figures? Or like, uh, <laughs> what the fuck's it called? Kmart? Dude, Hieroglyphics? No, dude. Somebody! You what is think? it? Maybe. If you're stuck in a room, you're stuck in a cave, right? You're mm -hmm. in there by fire and somebody brings an apple mm -hmm. and you've never fucking seen one and you take a bite of it. Oh, that would that would that would do things to me. I still feel that way. A cold Granny Smith, I would mm -hmm. take that over sex a lot of days. Cold Granny Smith, a mm -hmm. little bit of peanut butter on it. Come on now. She'll never leave you unread. Do you DM a lot of like girls that you think are attractive or you no, they hit I, you up? I usually wait until people like DM me. I'm because I'm so scared of rejection that like I have sent like a DM to like like a hot chick that I thought was like pretty cute or something. Yeah. And it fucks with my ego because if I hit them up and they don't respond, then I'm like, oh, all right. Maybe I'm just invisible. And who knows? She maybe is dating somebody or she's not into super sexy buff guys like me. Like who knows what the flaw is? Yeah. But what about you? Do you? I sent, let me think, I sent Bruce Willis's daughter, one of his daughters, a DM one time, and she didn't write me back. But how did that, did that do anything for your ego? Or were you just like, damn? No, I saw her at a party, and I'd seen her before. I just thought she was, oh, yeah. I just what thought she, she like? was really Pressing neat you? and had just, uh. That's a rejection for me, though. I, uh, you know, visually, I was very, you know. Do you remember what you said? Stimulated by her. She didn't say anything. No, what did you say? I said, oh, good evening. 
Um, what? I said, oh, good evening. There's bugs in here. I said, oh, Which good one? evening. Uh, All right, what do you say? Oh, damn, he's got a lot of them. I should have went through the catalog. <laughs> I just, I didn't know, dude. I had uh, somebody will get back to you. Her? Rumor. Yeah. Yeah. That's her name, Rumor. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, beautiful. Or she, you know, attractive lady. I don't know her that well, but she just had. Uh, uh, I just saw her somewhere, and yeah. So then I sent her in DM, but but that's okay. It's like you know, that's life. What are you gonna do? It is, and you don't know why they didn't respond or oh, she whatever. Could be married. Her dad has been sick. She also may have zero interest in me. She may uh, not yeah, even. Yeah, you don't know. Yeah, it could be anything, dude. You're basically just throwing. You're just wishing into the world. That's really what it is. Yeah. And it's kind of for like a date or get to know somebody. Um, so I don't know. That's pretty, that's okay though, right? Who are, who are the people you're dating? Are they people you kind of meet out and about or are these, you know? Let me think. Um, uh, a gal that I met at a comedy show. Okay. But the tough thing is, yeah, you start to look at your schedule. You start to look what that's like. You start to look at your own ambitions. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, David Spade and I are trying to get that movie done. Mm -hmm. And not to name drop, but people know that. And that's what we've been working on. And so it's like, that's awesome. well, if I have to go do that, how long does that take? And then, yeah. you know, people keep at, or I want to go tour more. So that's probably going to be the rest of this year and next year. Yeah. I feel so. insane when a girl's like, we should get drinks sometime. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you free in four months? I know. You're like sick. She's like, no. And if I am, I'm dating somebody else. Yeah. But in some weird way, you're like, okay, that's when I'm like here or something. Do you ever do uh, chocolate Sundays at the Laugh Factory? Mm. They book you for a first impression, mm -hmm. but it's like two and a half years before. They're like, are you available in 2048? <laughs> and you're like, yeah. If I'm not dead, I'll be there for my three minutes. But I remember in like 2015, I signed up for it. And thank God it took so long because I was trash then, probably slightly less trash when I did it. But like, Ended up doing well and you got passed and everything, but it's like, it was like a two and a half year wait. Yeah. It's just so funny to be like, are you available for this? You're like, huh? Who has plans for that? <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm going to be enlisted for that. My bad. Yeah. That's the future, man. The, the future, future is so weird because it's like, we know it exists, but we don't. The future, just like a moving walkway at the mall. It's just going to keep going no matter who's on it or who's off of it. It's just going. The future is so, because we know so much about it based on what we know from the past, you know, like, or we yeah, assume, assume, that's the thing about the assume, future. Yeah. It's this big bowl of assumption, you know, yeah. it's this fucking grandiose play of assumption. So we've assumed exactly what's going to happen based on everything that's happened. But then that's the goal. I think that's the dope ass thing that the future can do, right? If the future is a fucking real vibe, right? If he's like trick daddy or something. Oh, it's got a couple of tricks up at sleep. Yeah. You know, like, oh, flying cars. No, here's a flashlight. You're like, I'm not mad. <laughs> it kind of works. It's kind of better than a flying car. You ever used a flashlight? Uh, nope, I never have. Man, have you ever used it? I have. It's sad. Is the it, the pose does that, it blink after it's full or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> what is that crazy or whatever? No, my litter robot for my cat does that though. Oh, it does. Yeah, after I come into the oh, litter robot. Damn. No, uh, but. It's the post nut regret is insane mm -hmm. because you you have to clean it out and you're like in a sink. There's dishes you haven't washed in three weeks and you're just in there scrubbing away. Oh. You catch a glimpse of yourself in like oh. an old fucking shiny cup looking at you. It's, Can't you take it to the cleaners or whatever? <laughs> uh, you could probably put it outside and like water it down. There has to be a place to mail it or something, you know? I think prison. They'd be pretty happy with that. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, we really want to get an inmate. If anybody knows an inmate or has a familial inmate, uh, we would love to have a pen pal, I think, in here. Oh, a pen pal would be cool. And preferably, I would love for them. I don't want to say what they're in for, but... Tell me, you know. I'll do... Or like, give me a clue. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to do a little, yeah, a little miming there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah, a little game of clue right I feel there. like it has to be a good crime, huh? Yeah, definitely. Because I feel like even, I mean... I would just be so curious to even talk to somebody who's ever murdered somebody. I know. I've always wanted to. And the, the crazy thing is, we probably have. Mm. The dude at a fucking juice shop. Hey, are you next in line? Oh, yeah. Cool. This guy's killed somebody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you go first. Have you ever talked to somebody who's killed somebody? Mm. Oh, yeah, dude. I got really? a I got a friend who killed somebody. On purpose? Mm. I don't want to say. Well, good. Legal reasons. But he's, yeah. Honestly, bro. He, and he's... 
He said it's all. He said it's it's awesome. Well, I think we know why he did it. Why? I don't know. But like, if you're like, was it on accident or not? And he said it was awesome. I don't think any accidents are awesome. He said it was awesome. Now, wow. uh, now you have to know him and know what okay. other stuff I think he thinks is awesome. Right. You have to have your own idea of what is awesome. You know, you have to be like, uh, you know, if you could be a stunning Steve Austin fan. Did he always say that? This is awesome. Was that him? Um, so I think there's a lot of elements that can go into that. Yeah. But is he in jail or no? He is. Or we don't have to get into that. Yeah. I don't want to snitch. I don't want to snitch. I don't want to. I don't want him coming after me. That's all I'm saying. It was an accident. He's he's vibing, you know. What else can we talk about? What else do we have in the news, Zach? Um, a German surgeon was fired because he had a janitor help with an amputation. Because no one was available. That's healthcare, bro. German surgeon fired you. They getting anybody. I saw something recently. Maybe you can try this. There's a dude got got fired at a hotel. A manager snuck into somebody's room and sucked their foot. Mm hmm. That you was in Nashville. Bring that up. Was that really? Yeah, Bubby. Did you did you talk about it already or no? No, never talked about it. This was in Nashville. Yeah, I would love. Does to. that resonate? Living there for a couple of years now. Oh wow! So, second guess toe is a sort of nightmare. Let's go to the the. Oh, part. that's somebody who's had a toe mm. or two in his taste buds. Yeah, David Patrick Neal, three first names, 52, was arrested Friday after a hotel guest, Peter Brennan, awoke around 5 a.m. on March 30th to find the night manager indulging his apparent foot fetish. Wow, what does it say he did? Brennan reportedly screamed when he found Neal sucking on his toes and immediately recognized him as one of the two hotel staff members who had been in his room the previous day to help him with his TV. First of all, if you call a man from the front desk to come help you with your TV. Yeah, what do you, you're kind of asking for it. You are giving low key, you're giving low key gay, you're giving a lot of low key gay. You're giving a lot of like, oh, maybe you could come in and suck my toes. Because think about it. He was in his room. Oh, my TV doesn't work. He probably has his shoes off. The night manager is like, yeah, okay. What do you want to watch? Yeah. TNT? No, let me see them TN feet. All yeah. Right? And he kind of saw him like <laughs> dabbling right there, wiggling. He's pointing. Oh, the remote's over there. Yeah. Like that's, that's on all him. it takes, man. What else does it say? Anything else, Zach? Let's see some more information, huh? Do you go to jail for that or are you just horny camp? All my life you just have that sense of security and that and that sense of peace, right? It's not like you're camping and you have to kind of keep one eye open. You have a security that's yours. When you close your eyes, you feel like you're safe and you're protected. And it was a complete violation. Who are you? Why are you in my room? It was almost like a dream. Upon further investigation, Brennan, his attorney, uh, found that Neil had a lengthy rap sheet that included voluntary manslaughter conviction for shooting his roommate during a fight in 96. Well, the toe sucker shot someone? Yeah. Wow. So he's grown since then. He has. What would you do if you were uh, asleep in, in a hotel in Nashville someone was sucking on your toes? I mean, look, I'll say this. It's hard to get a foot off. <laughs> okay, so maybe the dude is just really... <laughs> he needed that. You know, as somebody who wasn't breastfed as a child, and he just needed some suck. I think you got to let him go for a little bit. Yeah, I would. Because what's going to happen next? Like, where do you go from that? Yeah, what is your toenail going to grow a little bit? I, <laughs> I would, yeah, I'd give him a few. I'd be, I, I would do like two or three like, oh, no, what are you doing? Because then I could also see if I'm into it. Because right. you're already going to sue him. You're already going to make bank. You might as well dabble and see if you're into the, you know, yeah. the foot fantasies. I'm trying to think see of anything like that's about. ever happened. Around you us. Gotten, uh, I walked into a room one night and uh, there was a big guy sitting on the bed already picking really? his feet when I walked into my room. They gave me the wrong room. And how, did you say anything? Or just, oh, I'm sorry. And turn around. I did that. Backed out. Yeah. Respected what he was doing. Understood it. About 4.15 in the afternoon. I get it. Picking his toes. Yeah. But then again, if you were the night manager, you would take that as a sign of flirtation. Oh, you're picking your toes when I'm here to fix your TV. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, now that's another thing. See, there's things that people take. Everybody's idea of what is flirtation is different, right? Uh-huh. So I think if you're in your room, you're chilling, a dude, you're like, hey, something's wrong with the TV. He comes up and he's being even a, say if that guy, the night manager guy or or the, the, the night manager guy is thinking immediate. Of course, if you're a gay guy who likes sucking on people's feet and a guy calls you to his room, the first thing you're hoping in your head. Oh yeah. Well, it, also that's is not that this too, dude wants me to launch all over his back, right? <laughs> so, not too foreign watching porn. 
Right. You know, hotel manager fixes TV and something else. Right. It's not too far down the pipeline. Not crazy at all. He might have taken some melatonin the night before, still been a little off in the head. You so know? I think, yeah, if some of, yeah, so some people, they read signs wrong. Correct. Especially if you want the signs to be a certain thing. That's what's really interesting. Right. And dude, that's what like, that's what like fucked me up with like rejection and dating. And like, that's why I'm like, so like, I don't hit on women. I just like kind of see if they like come to me because I'm scared. Because I remember I went to a movie and I saw Jackass 2.5 mm. in high school with this girl I thought I was vibing with. We saw mm. it in the middle of the day, matinee, you know, balling on a budget. And we like held hands during the movie. Mm-hmm. Afterwards, I kissed her in front of her car, Pontiac. And I was, wow. I was geeked. And she was driving? She could drive? She had one of those, yeah. Wow. Yeah, so, but when I got home, I remember I was so excited. I was oh, unloading yeah. the dishwasher because um, I was a chore my mom would make me do. And then I got a text. I was like, hey, I always don't want to confuse you, but I always just saw you as more of a friend. Mm. And I and I think about that to this day. Damn. So now, like, that's where my rejection fears mm. come from is, like, you make that move. And she's like, oh, no, like, I no, I totally saw you just as, like, a friend. And you're like, oh, my bad. Like, I don't. I think just the embarrassment yeah, fucks you up. Oh, yeah. I remember, I mean, when I was really young, my mother rejected me so much that that kind of stuff really hangs over onto a lot of relationships, yeah. right? But I'm trying to think of with actual girls. Uh, yeah, some kids locked me in this one girl into a closet, and they kept saying, like, you need to kiss or whatever, right? <laughs> you and a girl? Huh? Yeah. That's like the straightest thing you could do. Oh, it was insane, dude. So we didn't know what to do, so that was scary. They're like, what do you, you mean you didn't know what to do? Yeah, you, they're like, you queers better make out or we're going to beat the fuck out of you, you know? And so I didn't. Were it you was, paying these people to say that to you? And, and, like, she oh, had, I guess. and we both lived in like the same neighborhood, so we had the same haircut. Dude. So <laughs> it was like, that was the part that was just fucking crazy. Because right. I didn't know if like, sh- we were both like. You didn't like scramble for a beanie or something to cover <laughs> up her hair? I just didn't know if we were like trans by hair or whatever. Like I didn't know what was going on, you know? It was like just. What if you made out and just turned into one person? <laughs> oh, yeah. So that was a lot, dude. I remember that. And just the fear of having to make out while people are banging on the door and threatening to fuck you up if you don't kiss. (laughs) That's crazy. Um, What'd you guys end up doing? Kissing, I think. I don't even remember. I don't know. I just remember being so fucking just scared, you know? Yeah. And then, um, but yeah, as I got older, yeah, I think just, you know, I never got to be like my buddy would always be the one who was inviting the girl to the dance and he always had the girlfriend. I always had to go with like the friend of the yeah, friend. Yeah, I, w- I was always like the wingman by uh, in, by accident. Yeah. It'd be like my friend would start talking to a hot girl and then it, it's like the two plus ones at a wedding that hit it off. It's like the guy and the girl both know the people getting married and then there's just two random people that are like, eh, I'm Ted. I, f- I used to bang his dad. I don't know. Like, yeah. There's no correlation. Yeah. I'll never forget, I asked the girl, I just posted on my Instagram the other day, I asked the girl, when I first moved to LA, like one of my first weekends out, my friend's talking to a hot chick, I'm just talking to the other girl, and I was like, oh, what do you do for work? And she goes, no. And I was like, all right. <laughs> no <laughs> is crazy. Yeah. Not even N-O-P-E, nope. Yeah. No. Cool. Two letters ruined me. That was 2017. I still think about it. A no is cr- no, but no is crazy, bro. An, an unexpected no will ruin you. It'll rock your world. It'll fucking. Well, I think a lot of women. I don't know if they realize like how much as a man it is. It's hard for us to fucking get up there and put the balls out there. That's why, like, I commend anybody that does it, whether yeah. you take an L or not. Dude, the other day I'm in New York City, right? And thanks to everybody that came out in New York, we had we did like a show in the round. Oh, in New York. We were out in Westbury, New York. Oh, wow. And Glenny Balls came out. Oh, nice. Um, no Nonsense Keith Peterson came out. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, it was awesome. How big was that? It was like maybe 2,200 or 2,400 maybe. It's beautiful. So it was cool, man. It was really, and it was just, it was great. I would go back there in a heartbeat. Um, but I do, uh, yeah, I was always the friend of a friend on the dating thing. And I think a lot of it was just no con- a lack of confidence. Because when I look... Uh, it, it almost makes me like, I'll wait for chicks to ask me out sometimes, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I know that then you end up getting, you don't end up getting sometimes options of who you want. You end up getting options of who wants you, who wants right? You. Which isn't bad. Right. Because sometimes it may be a better path for who wants you might be, get you exactly where you want to be. Right. But are you always then, is there some feeling of like, oh, I'm not asking who I want? Okay. Does it make I, sense or it, not? No, it does. It does. Um, I, I kind of like... If I kind of like that a little bit, because then they are at least under the maybe assumption of like, 
oh, this is Theo's life. I know Theo. I love Theo. Oh, he does a podcast and he tours a crazy amount. Like they know baseline level Theo. But when you go on like I, Raya, I'm not on there. I, I can't get on either. Uh, really? Yeah. That makes me feel better about myself. God, I've been on there for like 12 fucking months. Waiting now, and just Dude, I made a every fake Instagram then? called Raya with two A's and I just DM girls and be like, yo, DM Trevor. <laughs> Dude, I don't know what the fuck's happening. There's people who are like valet attendants for like the Beverly Wilshire who are on there. It's insane. Biden's on there, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Life Alert and fucking Raya, his two go-to apps. But yeah, um, but I'm not on there, and it's kind of good. I think. I think being off the apps yeah, is probably helpful. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not on any of them. I just. I. But it's kind of nice that I can't get on in a way. Yeah, I, well, I just see like how people's body movements are when they're on an app. It's like animalistic. They're just like, right, 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 right. And they're just like looking so much for like that stimulation. It's like, I'd rather something either happen in real life or somebody kind of come to me because then they're like, hey, like I see what you do. I see what you're about. And I like that. Right. Versus if you're on an app, you're starting baseline. She's like, what do you do? And you're like, oh, I'm like to you, you're Theo Vaughn. You're so clearly who you are. You know exactly who the fuck you are. And then you tell somebody who's disconnected in this world and you're like, oh, I'm a comedian. And they're like, Oh, like, like, what do you do? And you're like, oh my God, like, I, like, like, just imagine explaining your tour schedule to somebody who just found out you did stand up. They'd be like, wait, wait, wait. like, there's so much to unpack. Mm -hmm. So if somebody already knows, like, oh, you're always doing your podcast, you're always on the road, you're always filming, like, they kind of understand, they know what they're signing up for, maybe in a sense. And yeah. I don't want to sound pretentious or anything, but it does feel like somebody might have done their research a little bit. Yeah. You know, versus if you're just on a date and it's just generic, like. Yeah, well, if I mean, if you, don't, you might almost have to get on a blind date to have somebody because these days you can look somebody up and see some stuff about them, even though sometimes it's better not to do it. Oh, yeah. Um, I had a girl tell me uh, before a date, she went on uh, the internet and typed in Trevor Walsh dick size. Nothing popped up. Mm. But, I'll, but I'll tell her it's, uh, it's, it's 12, 12. 12, 12? <laughs> yeah. 12 by 12. It is really? It's a CM, oh, so baby. It's, CM. It's a uh, centimeter. 12. No, I don't. It's a gross. I, it's 144. <laughs> yeah. It depends on how crypto is doing. Let's be honest. Yeah. Uh, but she just, she told me that while we were on the date, she's like, yeah, I like to look up the guys you go on dates with. And I looked up like your dick size. Just see if anybody like talked about it. Wow. Nobody had. Yeah. I think having, they were left speechless gang, bro. <laughs> Having that wiener when you're young and having that fucking peace on you is really, it's crazy. That's so And cool. especially if you're so lonesome as a kid, it becomes your only fucking way to make yourself feel good. That's what I remember. A little stress ball. I remember just feeling a so horrible a, about myself that really? the only way I could make myself, because it's an explosion of it, feeling good. It really is a stress ball. The penis is a stress ball. Stressed out, touch it a few times. Wow, I'm, I'm not stressed you had it anymore. unlimited. Give me I was, Arby's. Dude, I remember getting scared I was going to run out how much I had in me too, you know? Oh, and you know what's crazy? You never really do. And then you hit seventy eight one day, and all of a sudden, well, unless you're De Niro, yeah. You what do you take for that? Oh, I think you just fucking Herbal Life. I think you just take a nap and then fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Is there an age you think you'll be done being horny? Oh yeah, sixty five probably. Yeah. Anybody? I think once you can retire. To me, if people are real older and they're fucking, to me it seems like a lot. Somebody asked me recently if my dad still fucks, and I was like, I don't want to know. Yeah. But some days he comes in a little too calm. And I Does go, he? All right. Were you playing the back nine or are you playing the back? What are you doing, Pops? <laughs> I, I wouldn't know. ask him all that, dude, if he's doing I would never stuff. ask. I would never ask. Yeah. I think one time I went, my stepdad, I I lived with this family in high school, and I, I went with them, and uh, the dad and I did a, a Mardi Gras parade. Oh, and he boy. told me that he got a little <laughs> recently, and it fucking blew my mind. Kinda. Isn't that crazy? Like, I don't respected think about him, that. though, but it was just crazy to hear it. What else we got? Zach, any news? This woman says she's allergic to running. Um, a lot of people are giving her shit for this. She had a reaction trying to catch a flight. Oh, she got a UTI. That's all that is. Oh, whoa, 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 This is the New York Times. God damn. Okay. The swelling has swelled. I just had a reaction. You go back to that, Dude, son. I... God dang, Wow. Really? That was like watching porn back in the day where like the photo would load, mm -hmm. you know, percentage-wise. Because mm -hmm. that, that came in out of nowhere. At first, I wanted to be like, all right, you're being annoying for no reason. Then I was like, you can be allergic to anything, just not me. God. Oh, th there's footage of her running. How's it is funny how like people like... Uh, Sorry to cut you off. Uh, document everything on TikTok now. Like, like there's like in court, they're like watching TikToks. But like, well, here's me documenting my rash. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, bitch, that's a TikTok. Yeah. Okay. That doesn't necessarily, if you put it to music or whatever, what does she say in this thing, Zach? Can we see any of this? 
she was running on a delayed flight and then made a TikTok about how you can be allergic to running. And this is proof of that. It's because she had a reaction to it. That sounds like something I would have said in like eighth grade PE when they're like, all right, run the mile, but I'm allergic. Once we got on the plane, she started breaking it out into hives. And this is what happened oh, last wow. time when her throat started closing. She popped a few Benadryls hoping it would go away, but it didn't. Gang, gang, hives. Did she just say gang, gang? She did. She ended up having to quietly use her EpiPen. We didn't let anybody else know because knowing America, they were charged with gang, gang? for no reason. I think this confirmed our doubts that she's allergic to running. Thankfully, she was fine and it was just a little drowsy after. What a full circle moment. That is crazy. Do you think that we're getting so soft people are allergic to running? I think that is the environment that we're headed into as a species. Yeah. Well, I do think that's something that you could challenge a PE teacher with. Yeah. Hey, or you got to run the mile. I'm allergic to the mile. Uh, what do you mean? You're going to question what I'm allergic to? Yeah. Just like you're allergic to your wife. Where's the last time you saw her <laughs> start flaming the PE teacher? Well, bro, that's the problem with every nobody. Here's one of the issues with everything. Nobody wants to follow what the kind of basic guidelines are for everything. Like there, when I was a child, there was a template for everything. There was how you did it. You stood for the Pledge of Allegiance. You didn't even know anything. Maybe you knew a fireman. Maybe your mom and fucking, you know, was trying to date a cop or something. That's the most you knew about the military. Yeah. <laughs> but you stood for the Pledge of Allegiance, right? You like you respected you your teachers. Anything. You didn't question anything. And now, now we've can't. gotten a place where you question everything everything but is it doing us any good really because no. all it is is just watching people fight and now nobody wants to do any jobs anymore because they're not respected well also i think it's the power of the phone too because like a pe teacher can be like that's not real you have to run the fucking mile but then you pull a phone out and they're like well now i could get fired for this and they're like oh all right it's like those videos where people are like acting crazy like the karen type shit they whenever they see the phone they either double down and go even crazier I love when they go crazy. They're like, oh, hello, Facebook Live. I'm like, bitch, I'm on TikTok. You think my young ass is on Facebook? But they're always like, oh, hello, everyone. Uh, who's watching? But you either double down or you back up and you're like, oh, I'm so, so, dude, I saw a guy get kicked off a flight. This is a great story. This guy got kicked off a flight. I was coming back from Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And this dude, he was an older guy. And uh, this is first class. I say this, uh, you know, once well, once a year after all the touring, I go to Hawaii. It's like my like fucking chill out place. And on the flight back, this guy first thing goes, do you guys have any vegan options for breakfast? Like 7 a.m. She goes, oh, no, this is all we have. And it was some scrambled egg. And he gets mad. And he tosses the menu in the air. And I go, this we're about to pop off. You can feel that fucking the little bit of Hulk Hogan. And this dude's like 70, right? Next, they're playing like just kind of like ukulele, just kind of like casual. Mm -hmm. And the TV screens, it's like it's a preset. It just plays. It's like it's a small world. It's just playing. Yeah. And he goes, hey, can you turn this music off? Right. And I go, we're really bubbling. <laughs> we're getting to something good. And then they go, we can't turn off the music. This is the most electric thing I've ever seen. He pulls out his iPad and he puts on Stairway to Heaven by Led Zeppelin on full blast. And he leans over to his wife and goes, they'll never make music like they used to. <laughs> and then eventually he's playing it out loud. Seven minute song. Oh, and, it, and it's to the point where I'm like, this is a good fucking song, you know? And then uh, essentially like they gave him a couple warnings. And then uh, this like Samoan chick in cop outfit comes in, grabs him by the shoulder and his attitude shifts like crazy. And he's like, Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to. And then he turns the music off and they kick him off. He oh. leaves his wife there. But on oh. the way out, on the way out, most badass thing he ever says, he goes, go on without me. You'll be fine. You always are. I was like, this is the most, <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is happening? This is like the end of a fucking guilt porn scene. But the guy got escorted and the wife didn't say shit the whole time. She's like, Ugh. Somebody give this man some fentanyl. Stop yeah. acting out, Robert. It was Randy's gonna Randy. <laughs> yeah, it was one of the most electric things. Damn, bro, that's hype when somebody gets thrown off. But his 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 change was so quick, and it was it was one of those moments where everyone else on the plane started looking at him like, "Oh, is this we're about to be in a is this a world star moment?" Yeah, I was excited. You ever been in a and like like a moment like that where where someone's about to start popping off? Oh, dude, when I was last time I was in Hawaii, they had a, uh, somebody died at breakfast, right? Uh, so let me think about what happened. So we're at breakfast, right? Because that's where somebody died at. And <laughs> Good meal to die at, I will every, say. Oh, I agree. Everybody's eating, right? Magic Johnson is there, okay? Really? It was a nice hotel, right? Yeah. So same, right? Once here, I take myself to a nice hotel in Hawaii, right? Which is a blessing, man. It's like I, I work super that hard. That's yep. what I do. Yep. So Magic Johnson's is there, dude, and he's chilling. And 
some dude starts dying, you know, and every some people know how to help people that are dying. So I, I kind of jump up and I'm like, oh, fuck, I don't know anything. You know, I'm a comedian. Yeah. So I sit back down. Start right? plugging Blue Chew ads. Yeah, yeah. So other people go over there and they put up like this partition around the dude's table, which you can hear him over there just oh, pumping on the dude, right? They take the buffet stands and put it in front. Closed. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of how they did. But then so many people got over there, they even had to move those. So you can kind of see the guy, and they finally get him back up, right? But then uh, he goes down again, and oh, so they're no. over there. And then it's like, he it's a wrap. So everybody's like, how long do you wait? How long do you wait till after somebody's like dead to eat again, yeah. right? So everybody's kind of like- Can you get seconds? Right. There's nobody's like making a move, you Does know? Does the waiter take his plate? Like, are you done here? Do you it's need a box so or do you need to be in a box? What are we doing here? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So it's like, what do you, so. What did Magic Johnson do? It was crazy. And I'm like, dude, this guy should have done something. Right. Fucking First name hold Magic. His hand or something. Yeah. yeah. Or like, the, you know, make a wish. The final thing is like, dude, Magic Johnson's here to send you off. Yeah. That'd be kind of cool. If Magic That'd be so Johnson, cool. The last thing you see is like a couple yeah. of pineapples and Magic Johnson. I'm going to assist you to heaven, brother. <laughs> You know? And then you don't die, and you're just hanging out, and he's like, I'm going to go to my room now. Yeah, Kareem's an asshole, that's what I've <laughs> always heard. That's um, crazy. Last time I was in Hawaii, uh, the week I got there, somebody got their arm chopped off in a 7-Eleven with a oh, machete. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's crazy. That seems like more Albuquerque-type vibes. It really is. It's kind of like also like we get it. It's a personality thing, and I have to walk around. What happened to your arm? Oh, it was machete. Yeah. I get it, but uh, it was crazy. Yeah, I met a cool lady from, I think, Oklahoma maybe, and her daughter, she had lost an arm. Um, she was a mail truck driver mm. and I met her and her daughter, beautiful ladies. And, uh, she had something had happened. The mail truck had fallen over and, uh, she rolled over, it rolled over on her arm and she didn't, she, um, that's crazy. Yeah. She mailed her arm to heaven, I guess, or whatever, <laughs> you know, or whatever, however they say it, but she was missing an arm. I don't know. What else we got, man? Anything else we wanted to talk about? I'm trying to think. Um, How's work been, man? So you tour, you, do you notice that there's other comics? Cause you kind of got your start. Do you feel like in social media? Yeah. Yeah. I started with stand up, but social media is what kind of like put me in front of people. And right. then I used the people who are watching me from digital to be like, Hey, I also do stand up and come to a show. Yeah. And then just kind of like, you know, the first headlining show I did was in San Diego in like 2017 and like 112 people showed up and I was like, Oh, okay, cool. And then I quit my job and I slowly did one nighters and then I just kind of started building with videos and just, and then by throwing myself in the deep end to headline, I didn't have 45 minutes on my set list. I wrote crowd work. Yeah. This was early on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know how bad you got to be at that time to be like, all right, for the next five minutes. Uh, oh, cool. What's your brother's name? <laughs> yeah. Like I wasn't ready. So I just kind of threw myself in the deep end just because I was like, you know, if I'm going to take this leap, I got to do it now, you yeah. know, because then I can quit my job, pay my rent by doing stand-up and a little bit of videos and I can just double down on myself. And that was six, fuck, I don't even know, almost six years ago. Yeah. But yeah, it's good. I'm filming a special in uh, July. Yeah, where will that be at? Do you know? Uh, the Paramount in Austin. It'll be oh, yeah. July 14th and 15th. Uh, Saturday's shows are sold out. Uh, we added a Friday and I think that's almost sold out, but TrevorWallsComedy.com. But you, you're doing like nine shows there, right? Yeah, we're going to be there, I think in like a week or something. Holy shit. Have you done that theater we'll be before? There next week. Yeah. It's great. I've done it a few years ago. I haven't done it in a while. Yeah. Damn, how many shows are you doing? I'm so excited. I think we're doing nine, ten. Ten? Ten shows. We just added a, another show. What the fuck? Is that two it. per night or is that just like ten days in a no, row? No, it's ten days. I'm going to stay in Austin. Oh, roguing gonna, it up. Yeah. I'm gonna spend some time over there and try to just see what I like about the city. Nice. It just, is a, I was I was there on Sunday. It's a nice city. You were? I do like yeah. So on after Indianapolis, oh, well, you'll love this. We filmed at Gary V Con with Gary V did a video there. And then on Sunday there was in Kyle, Texas, which is 30 minutes from Austin. They tried to break the record for most people named Kyle in one location ever. And I made that video a couple years ago about like guys named Kyle. Uh -huh. I was like this like fucking just, it just a kid who just loved punch and drywall, drinking monsters, just like just was a kid who definitely was neglected by his parents and huffed Axe body spray. And then so they were doing a Kyle meetup. And I was like, dude, how funny it would be if I went to this meetup dressed up as my Kyle character. So you did it. I did. That was on Sunday. Yeah. So that's a video we're working on. Was this that week. crazy? It was fucking nuts. But it was like, it was at the Kyle fair. Right. So there was like families and shit there, but there was also 1,700 
people named Kyle <gasps> registered, and you needed two thousand three hundred to break the record. So they missed it. They missed the record. But dude, I'll tell you what, I've never seen that dude that many Kyles. We could have fucking January six all over again, dog. We could have taken over a fucking vape shop easy, yeah. <laughs> dude. It was. And what do they do? Yeah, what well, was their booth? Were they like Kyle? There, uh, dude, there was a drywall booth where like you could duck, duck Kyle or whatever. Uh, dude, I don't even know what the fuck. We were in and out of there pretty quick. Um, but there was a drywall booth where you could pay five dollars to punch some drywall. Um, it was like half families and just half. Dude's named Kyle with nothing better to do. Is and it crazy like, to see that many people name one with one name in the same place? It is because they all look like they were Kyle's. <gasps> they all look like bring up Kyle. Yeah, or it, a Kyle. Yeah, please. just type in Kyle. It'll Most common up. Kyle looking. Yeah, they all kind of look like they would. Uh, you know, they had puka shell necklaces at one point. Oh yeah, and they they got sunburn easy type of Ooh, type of fellow. Yeah. You know, it's not like blonde hair, but it's not brown. It's kind of that like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, type in Kyle. Oh yeah, there you go. So there's me right there. Oh, so yeah. if you go to Kyle, know your meme. It's just there's my video. Right there. Yeah. Oh god, yeah. So I made this video like maybe three or four years ago about a guys named Kyle, and then so I just was like, this would be such a funny video. <laughs> so stupid. If we just went to the the fair, and so we got a video and like. It was very, it was fun, dude. It, when any, anytime people see a camera mm -hmm. and a microphone, they already get pretty like fired up. Mm -hmm. But then when Kyle see a camera, they're like, "This is my chance." So, dude, they're going wild. They let me on stage, and I got to yell a bunch of shit. That's sick, dude. Yeah, I was like, "It smells like Slim Jims and broken homes." <laughs> and uh, then they were like, "All right, Trevor Wallace." <laughs> yeah, it was fun, man. So that video will be coming out later this week. But um, were you ever approached by like Barstool or anything to work with them? Uh, I've done podcasts there, but not like anything to work for them. Like, no, yeah, no, 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 I never was. I don't know. Were, have any LA people like work there? I think it's a lot of it's East coast people. I don't know why they don't have an LA office also. Yeah. Maybe LA is just fucking too pussy for them, dude. Damn. Damn. But they're, they're good people. Over there. I know I said whatever, how their, their podcast clip stuff. I, you know, I think they're very aware of that, but they're good people. Everybody I've met over there is, is really nice, dude. Caleb's awesome. Uh, all the KFC guys. Oh yeah, dude. They crushed it over there. I mean, yeah. they kind of like, you know, they've created some neat shows. They got all types of characters that start to come out of there. I think that's real fascinating. Yeah. You know, I'd love to have sometimes more like characters to be involved, like in, our world and podcasting and stuff. Sometimes it's hard to like facilitate all that though. You Dude, know, I mean, it's literally like a reality show. It's like, they just launch careers based yeah. on the employees they work with. It's really smart because people attach to the personalities instead of the brand. Mm. It's like, Oh, we love Glenny balls, but in loving Glenny balls, you're loving barstool. Right. You know? Yeah. It's so much easier to, uh, to get attracted to personality than it is a brand. So it's really smart to do that. What, um, what else could we think about? Yeah, I don't know if I can even think about anything else. Did I ever tell you a story when I first met you? You were eating, it was the Oxnard Improv. Maybe I said this on the last podcast, we'll just say it anyways. But the first time I met you, I, I hosted for your show in Oxnard. Oh, thanks, dude. And uh, this was like 2015, 2016, and you ordered a salad. It was a tuna sashimi salad with lettuce, and you're like, I don't want any lettuce. And the lady's like, so you want the salad? And you're like, I don't want the lettuce. And then you were eating just raw tuna with your shirt off. Yeah. And you looked at me and you go, it's crazy anybody can make a baby. And I was I was like such a fan. And I was just like, didn't want to overset my boundaries. And I was like, yeah, man, that is crazy. <laughs> like, I didn't, I don't want to like. It is crazy, man. When you think that anybody could fucking just pump ejaculate into somebody else and fucking get a kid out of them. But that's all that was going through your mind. It was just such a funny, mm. just sitting there eating. Makes me fucking hard, boy. It does. Thinking about that. Thank Sashimi? you, man. Yeah, yeah thanks no. for even checking in while I was eating. Dude, I mean, I was just sitting there. That was fun. We, we've done a lot of fun shows together. We did a fucking Red Bank together. and uh, Yeah, dude, I that was your, crazy, bro. I, I was losing my mind that weekend, remember? Oh, really? Oh, well, you, I think your flight got in like 30 minutes before the show. But I was like losing my fucking mind. That was crazy. It was cold. It was during COVID. It was bizarre. It was bizarre times. Yeah, it was Red Bank. People were wasted. Oh, yeah, because it was outside. It was like the first event, let alone like a big name. Like you was there. They're like, fucking yeah. I saw one guy just throw a chair at another chair. I was like, yeah. what are you trying to fucking make less chairs? <laughs> yeah. It was fucking awesome, dude. That was a fun weekend. I got to open your Will Turn show. That, that was, uh, that oh, was the yeah, biggest. Oh, yeah, dude. That was great, man. That was like the biggest theater. That I've was awesome. At the People time. were stoked. Really? 
At the time, yeah. yeah. I ended up doing one in, over the summer that was outside. It was like some stupid like 5,000 thing. That was unreal. I wasn't headlining. Wait, was, did you do uh, Canada? Yeah, the Outside Lands. It was me, I'm Michael. I'm going there. Oh, and Tom Segura. So we we essentially like opened loosely, opened for Tom Segura. But it was supposed to be Pete Davidson and he canceled. And then Tom filled in. And they're like, oh, you guys are still on the show. So you're doing it outside? Yeah. Let me know how you think it is. Damn. It's... I texted Bob, Bobby. Bobby did it too. I talked to Bobby about Bobby it. Bobby said he liked it. It's it's fun. It's just different. It takes a second to get used to it, but like that, like big pop is still there, but it's it's not like as magnetic, you know, like electric. Damn. The laughs. It's like you know when you watch people vape and the, it just dissipates in the air. Yeah. In a comedy club, it gets a little smoky in there. Yeah. Them stays laughs. In. Yeah. Hot the laughs, laughs. Let's go up to the. Yeah, the people are just like ha. Ah. It's not like you bomb, but it's just like people are like, ha. Ah. It's just weird watching somebody eat funnel cake while you follow your dreams. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but the laughs just drift up. But, dude, I will say Edmonton is very like yee yee, like country shit. You'll yeah. crush, dude. People might even get closer to the stage. If, if you were like, mm. fucking come here and get a lick of daddy, people would swarm up front. Fuck yeah, boy. Be like, fuck your table. Come sit up front, bitch. <laughs> I think people yeah. would do it. I think people And would. is it big? Like, can you it's see massive. everybody? No. Wow. Dude, it like I honestly, wow. like I like it blew my mind that 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 was there many there that was there mi- I can't talk that many people were just there, like it blew my mind, like five thousand people just watching you and you're like, just talking. It's crazy. Damn. But yeah, I'm like excited it. about it. I think I uh, yeah, uh, it's the only outside show that I have. I think right now. Also, y- I wasn't headlining. Tom was. So Tom, by the time he got on, was a little darker. So we were up there broad daylight. Uh uh-uh. uh. But oh yeah. Broad daylight. Dude, crazy. I mean, there, there's people, there's a lady like burping a baby in the front yeah, row. Yeah, I like I'm, that. Y'all better breastfeed. Yeah, I like Let me that. Get some boy. Tit. God, I fucking love so when if you're something's on, on a tit near me, I'm fucking happy, really. Oh yeah, RCP one. I'm next. Oh, I how do I smell, jump the line? Oh, I wanna see I just wanna smell gasoline and fucking watch something fucking breastfeed, <laughs> boy. You ever had breast milk? Uh I haven't had a lot. But you have? I probably had a little, I would say. You know, how can you even not get some just in, with all the ca- with everything these days? There's probably best everything, milk in it. Yeah. Everything's cut with that. Something, dude. Yeah, yeah, you can't even get a pure line of cocaine without being like <laughs> a little bit of fucking lactate. A little bit of breast milk in it. Um dude, thanks for hanging out today, man. Dude, thanks for having me. I uh Yeah, well, you can check out Stiff Socks podcast. Yeah, yeah, um, we'd love to have I you. I gotta on pop someday. back over there sometime and check in with you guys. Please do, man. It's always fun, man. People love seeing uh, our chemistry together. Yeah, and, uh, same man. It's been a blast over the years, man. You're so exciting to watch, and um, I'm glad that you and I are buds, and that we have like, you know, the ability I can connect with you. If I have a question, you know, yeah. and I ask you, always there for me. So I appreciate that. Yeah, man. dude. By any means, I'll, you called me recently. You're like, do people still use the word Riz? And I was like, yeah, you could. <laughs> yeah. And then I looked at the comments on that video. And people were like, they were like quoting it, like laughing. Oh, good. Yeah, I'm glad to be your like millennial little fuck to the internet. Yeah, I gotta have that plug in. Man. Exactly, exactly. So, dude. Thank you, bro. You're great, man. Thanks for having me. And I, and I mean that about your audience. When I said earlier, the best people. Yeah, man. I don't know how we did it. I don't know how we got a part of it. Just yeah, there's a lot of special people. I think out there. Uh, it, you know what you put out there attracts. You know, real attracts real, and that's the fucking worst thing I've ever said in my life. But it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, well, we're trying to stay. Yeah, it's just it's been interesting, man. But it is crazy, bro. I can't even believe that this many people come out to shows and. You know, just I think you're only getting bigger. I think, I think, I think, I uh, think your name is just like, you, I know like that you're big when like, like people who have never even seen stand up anymore, like they're just so disconnected. They're, you know, like people who are just so hot that when they don't look you in the eyes, it makes sense. Oh, yeah. And then the one time they make eye contact, they're like, do you know Theo Vaughn? You're like, yeah, this motherfucker is <laughs> on. <laughs> this dude is on. So Dang, congrats bro. on that. You're going to keep do 10 shows at the Paramount. The Paramount. That's crazy. Yeah, it's I'm like, excited. That's like thirteen thousand people. So it's gonna be crazy. Well, thanks, Trevor. I appreciate it, man. And thanks for uh, spending time, dude. Uh, Trevor Wallace will share all of his socials Please and everything. Do. Thanks and, so much. Uh, amen, brother. Best of luck. I'll see you out there. I'll see you on the date naps. Hell yeah. Yeah. Trying to date each other. <laughs> uh, all right, dude. Cut. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm just floating on the breeze, and I feel I'm falling like these leaves. I must be cornerstone. Oh. 